Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for frame rate is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Star Wars doesn't happen in the city. It doesn't happen in Parliament or in the library. It happens out here, away from civilization, amidst smugglers and bounty hunters. Star Wars is a Western. That's enough for me. Let's rock this thing. tell you i've thought a lot about this i've considered all the options and it is frame rate episode 142 i'm tom Merritt. hey man i'm brian brushwood and that was that was a lot of nerd rage as our lovely guest casey mckinnon put it um that video as uh i guess dropped a few days ago it's called like dear jj abrams exquisitely well produced and good points also maybe 20 years too late for me to care about <laughs> yeah, like yes okay. i agree Let's bring in our guest, Casey McKinnon. Thanks for joining us. Casey, you you said you got about three seconds into this thing. Yeah, I did. Actually, I skipped it a bunch of times in my social networking feeds. And, uh, well, I watched it for this show, at least three seconds of it, and then That's right. turned That's it off. That's good enough for me. <laughs> we appreciate that. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> now, I had kind of the same reaction as you, Casey, and, and you too, Brian, which is sort of like, okay, you like the first movie a lot, and... Okay, now why do you get to tell J.J. Abrams what he want, what he should do? And sure, you could look at a Star Wars as a Western, but you could also look at it lots of other ways. And there's other ways he might come up with to do it that'll be it, awesome. And well, I don't know. I'm you just know, and also, also like like J.J.'s being brought in as a fixer. If the whole point was like that, they're they got somebody to repair a franchise. You don't need to boss around the fixer. That's that's the wolf's job. The wolf the wolf will handle it, man. Don't worry about it. It's and- like J.J.'s here. And don't forget that a few weeks ago, Joss Whedon talked about how he didn't like The Empire Strikes Back ending. Yeah, right? And for me, that was the greatest movie in the franchise, and I could skip every other movie and just watch that one. Absolutely. So I completely disagree. Everyone has their own opinion, and, uh, you know, skip the nerd rage. Just let someone work really hard on this. I don't disrespect Joss Whedon, and I disagree with him, right? I think Joss Whedon is still brilliant. You know, we just we just tend to have different different opinions on that. I have a feeling when we get to the spoiler zone today, we might have three totally different opinions about the finale of Breaking Bad, too. But that doesn't mean yeah. we have to, like, hate each other and never speak to each other again. Uh, <laughs> maybe. I don't know. Well, or maybe. Oh, I don't know. Uh, that could be fun, too. I, I, I think, yeah. I mean, I think, <laughs> I think this is the end. I, it's been real, Tom. I really enjoyed it. But now I'm afraid we have like, to move on this is to a, the yeah. big story. <laughs> This just in, the big story. By the way, if you're new to the show, you've probably stopped watching by now. But this is Frame Rate, the show that helps you learn about how to watch what you watch, what you want to watch, when you want to, how you want to, and the devices and stuff you need to know about to do that. One of those things that we were hoping would be good to help you watch what you want, when you want, was Intel's on Q project. That was this purported name for their little set-top box. But now the stories are coming out of all things D and CNET that Intel is kicking this can down the road. They were going to launch it in 2013. Now they're saying maybe 2014. And now they're saying maybe we need a strategic partner to help with this. Maybe we need a Samsung to kind of give us some leverage or maybe an Amazon. Those are apparently two of the companies they're talking about. Yeah, specifically, the quote was, uh, we are experts in mobility and driving Moore's law, but we are not experts in the content industry and we're being careful, which essentially this was this was something that we were sort of uh, predicting the entire time. Like we want them to come in as the outsider and fix everything. But they're realizing, I assume, that it's not a hardware issue, that this is not a hardware problem, that what we are looking at is this intractable, intractable mess of previous legal entanglements that nobody's been able to, to crack. You know, the reason that Hulu can have one thing and not the other, it's not the hardware delivering it, it's the legal mojo. 
Exactly. Uh, this this is a mess, and we're we're seeing progress, right? We're seeing pressure being applied. We're seeing Netflix out there doing original shows, and we're seeing people using Netflix. But we also see a rear guard action from the cable distributors. They're trying to downplay the importance of cord cutting and using every tactic to defend themselves. And one of those tactics would be: we are not going to allow anyone to get into delivering our content or anyone's content over the internet directly unless we get a cut. This That's actually reminds me exactly of when Steve Jobs dies, died. And, um, you know, I remember hearing things about Apple TV and how they were going to, they, there, was, there was rumors that they were going to do awesome things for television and uh, content like that. And then I remember saying that, they have to start making really good um, relationships directly with the networks because if they don't, they're just going to get Time Warner Cable on their Apple TV. You know, it kind of feels like the same thing. You know, if you you have to go out and make those relationships and win those legal battles in order to make it happen, and obviously they don't have that. Man, I know normally we don't jump from one big story to another one so fast, but since yeah, I mean, that was a perfect segue, do you feel like we should jump forward, Tom? I think we have another big story. That fits right in, Brian. I totally agree. Stop everything. It's another big story. Jeff Books is the CEO of Time Warner. Time Warner is HBO, Warner Brothers Studios, things like TBS, CNN, and Time Magazine, although Time Magazine may be spun, spun off. It is not Time Warner Cable. Time Warner Cable has already been spun off, different company. But Jeff Books is out there saying... Well, you know, this idea of having HBO delivered directly over the Internet's all well and good. And sure, we'd love to do that. But we don't think it makes sense. That's like taking the interstate to the surface streets. People aren't ready for that. We look at the one or two million people out there cord cutting. And we look at the 70 million people who already have cable service and aren't cord cutting but don't have HBO. And we say, well, obviously, the bigger market is the 70 million. And then in the other breath, says, but this idea that you proposed here, Mr. Goldman analyst Drew Borst, of us bundling HBO as a service into the cable company's internet service is quite interesting. We might do something like that. So instead of saying, yeah, we'll take HBO, we'll sell it on the internet, you pay us, you get it, he's saying, we'll play along with our old buddies in the cable industry, and maybe we'll sell a version of HBO as long as you're giving money to the cable company as an internet provider. Well, and this has been like the big gulf. You know, what everybody wants is let me subscribe to HBO the way I do with Netflix. And they flatly said that's never going to happen, not in a million years. And the unspoken follow-up has been because it would piss off all of our cable partners. We built a whole industry on this. We can't turn around and, and knock the value out from underneath it. But this kind of hedge seems like it would work because, of course, they could say, hey, man, you're still getting the money. Now you're getting it from, from broadband sales instead of cable sales. We're still associated with, with, with you and your cable works. Uh, but to be honest, it's not really HBO's to offer. It's for the cable industry to accept. I mean, that's, that's the hard sell for me because if I'm a cable company, that's the last thing I want is HBO doing anything that, that would branch out with this because it, it's a two-way street here. I've been hearing a lot of rumbles in Los Angeles of, um, you know, instead normally, you know, people pitching new shows would go to the networks. But in this case, people are now going to Netflix and Amazon and all these different distributors. And they really need to get their act in gear to do things directly because in the future, I mean, it's a good thing those cable companies also do broadband because if not, they'd be completely out of a job within 10 years. I mean, I mean that's I mean, the question, of course, is, is it a good thing? Because that's why we're seeing these, these some might say, anti-competitive half measures where we're seeing stuff associated like, oh, yeah, like HBO? Well, you don't get your internet the right way. You know, the right way is to buy from a cable provider. Uh, mm -hmm. And on the one hand, you know, I'm frothing at the mouth for an opportunity to get something like this a la carte free-for-all existence. And this is close enough to it. And I'm already paying, you know, I happen to be with a, a broadband supplier uh, that's that's a cable company. So for me, I want it to happen, but also it's like it kind of it's it's not as as big of an earthquake as I'd like to see in this industry. Goldman analyst Drew Bors' question was: Is there potential for the model to offer HBO Go bundled with a broadband and a data service from a distributor? Books says 
the key thing you're saying, I think, is that if you're doing that, your distributor is helping you to do it with quality. So you could then develop a good broadband delivery of HBO with good marketing push by that and not undermine the plant that they are trying to maintain to deliver good HBO, broadband, HD mobile, you know, all of that. So what he's saying with his mouth is, <laughs> oh, that's really interesting. You know, delivering video on the internet, that's a, that's a chancy business. And maybe one of the reasons I'm implying HBO hasn't done this is it just wouldn't work very well if all 70 million people out there suddenly wanted to get their video over the internet. But if those lovely cable providers who also do internet would partner up with us and give us all the marketing that they give us on the cable <laughs> Tom, TV Tom, there's side. Some, there's something in your <laughs> eye oh, sorry as you that. act this out. It's just, it, uh, looks, it looks like you're blinking a lot. Sorry, uh, yeah, I did. I got something in my eye. But if they would give us that marketing and we don't lose that, then we, I think everybody wins, right? So, and what he's saying with, with, with his brain and with his implications is, sure, we don't want to piss off the MSOs and we don't want to lose the marketing they give us on the cable TV side, but we know people want this. So here's a half measure that gets us down there and we'll pretend that it's internet delivery that's the real motivator for us doing this way so we don't come off with an antitrust concern because there's just enough truth that video delivery over the internet is difficult, that we might be able to make this fly. I mean, and really all this is doing is adding another type of, of method to, to uh, validate. You know, we have all these pro services pro uh, that are finally making their content available. If you validate and prove that you're a Time Warner cable customer or a Comcast customer or whatever, and essentially, when, now that that structure is building, you could do that with HBO, and that's you already have that with HBO Go, but essentially what qualifies you as validated just that definition expands just a little bit. As long as you're still paying their friends, then I guess everything's sweet. You know, I have to wonder if Revision 3, Twit, you know, all these really great video people who've been making video and distributing it online, um, if they were in Los Angeles, I wonder if these people would have feel like they had more options to change. Yes and no. I think it's a great point, right? If if they were if they were just around the the water cooler, so to speak, there might be more deals struck. But at the same time, I think there's such an entrenched resistance to doing that. That I mean, you go to Santa Monica and you've got Amazon, you've got Microsoft, you've got Yahoo. Mm -hmm. They're all over. They're all all down there taking scripts. Those are that's big money, and you st you still see this resistance happening here. So yeah, I I think this is a rear guard action of like. Here's a way that the TV industry feels like maybe they won't end up like the music industry, which I didn't die, but it definitely felt like it lost a lot of money. I don't know whether it would have lost that money anyway, but because they got hoodwinked into Apple selling their music digitally, they feel like that's one of the reasons for the decline in revenues in the music industry, which are now coming back. I tend to disagree with them, but this industry is saying, don't let that happen to us. Fight for every inch as we move into this land that we can't resist moving into because that's where the consumers are going. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man. I, I, I mean, I guess, you know, only time will tell whether or not they're able to fight it off. I, I suggest you know, that it's not going to end so well. If you say something like only time will tell, that means it's time to move on to the slipstream. Thank you. I don't, I don't know why it means that, but it does. Uh, well, it we means, means I'm grasping at straws. I'm, I'm, I'm what, failing to, we've said everything there is to say. So out I'm with the cliches we go. <laughs> uh, Ar Ario is having a little bit of a difficulty in Chicago. If you're Chicagoan uh, saying, hey, where's my Ario? They've got technical difficulties, not legal difficulties this time. So they've delayed that rollout. But at the same time, they're saying, hey, we're not stopping rolling out. We're going to come to Columbus. We're going to come to Cincinnati. We're going to come to Indianapolis. Oh, and they're so close, Brian. They're coming to San Antonio. Do you think you can get an extension cord from Austin and just maybe? I mean, we're practically we're pretty far south in Austin. I mean, we yeah. could almost get San Antonio stations just over the air, which you know sort of defeats the purpose. I can't believe I am astonished, Tom, at how lazy I am that I have I can't be bothered to buy an antenna and turn on actual television. It it is astonishing to me how much of my life has been able to just be you know, like ah TV schmeevy whatever you know just. Yeah, everything DVR, Netflix with the kid. The kids have totally adjusted, and I'm pretty much past it. It's very rare that I even care about it. So I, even if it was in Austin, I, I don't know that I'd sign up for eight, eight bucks a month on Aereo. 
I mean, I hope they do well, you know, for what they're doing to the industry for shaking things up. But as far as like me being a consumer, I, I don't know that I would buy it. It would be a way for me to get Eileen to agree to cut the cord, right? Because oh, all, of a, sudden, all yeah. of a sudden, a bunch of things that she wants, like the voice and everything. Because we have over the air TV. But the problem is, Casey, I don't know if you have you tried an antenna here in LA? Because we're not that far away from each other. We did talk about it because I still need my guilty pleasures. Yeah, as much as much as I can get a lot of stuff that I watch online, I still need those guilty pleasures. So, but I haven't yet bought a um, bunny ears. Well, I've I've got my antenna over there. It's the best reception I can get in the house, uh, and, and short of putting an antenna up on the roof, I should say. If I if I move it this way, I can get ABC but not Fox anymore. If I move it that way, I can get Fox, but not ABC anymore. Wow. CBS and NBC seem pretty stable. They kind of show up in, in both ways. So that is one of the issues in, in a city. That's one of the reasons for Aerial legitimately to be a service is like, you know, I just in a weird position where the signals aren't cooperating for me, but Aerial can provide me an extension cord to a antenna up on a high hill that will give me great. Reception. Well, and yes. also there's there's the issue with um, CBS and Time Warner Cable. You know, I probably could have got CBS through Aereo. Well, and in fact, we uh, in previous stories Definitely. have talked about. Uh, I don't know if it was Time Warner, but one of the one of the uh, uh, cable networks that was having one of those pissing contests actually said, "Well, maybe we'll just recommend everyone get Aereo instead." Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think and, it was Time Warner. They play dirty. And actually, yeah. to talk <laughs> to speak to that. Um, I feel it's important to mention that since we got CBS back, all of our DVR recordings for CBS were deleted. Oh, what? Really? So we missed the premieres of Elementary and Big Bang Theory. Thanks, Time Warner Cable. <laughs> well, unfortunately, <laughs> the the, you'll never see those. They're, 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 I'm sorry, Casey, you will never ever see those shows. Right. <laughs> There's wish there were only a way. Uh, let's move <laughs> on to the tube tops. Got new new Roku's, new Roku's coming out. In fact, uh, the Roku 3 is coming to the UK for you Brits that were saying, hey, when am I finally going to get that good one? Uh, that's the top of the line one. But we're also getting a Roku LT, pretty much the same as its predecessor. It's got a new design. Uh, the Roku 1 gets a considerable upgrade, though. It gets 1080p. It used to only do 720p. Roku 2 adds a headphone jack, which Roku says 40% of the people who bought a Roku 3 said one of the reasons they bought it was for the headphone jack. So, okay, wow. the Roku 2 gets the headphone jack and dual band Wi-Fi capabilities uh, so it can work on more bands. And the prices are pretty good. LT retails for 50 bucks. Roku 1 is 60 bucks and Roku 2 is 80 bucks. Those are all coming to the U.S. I continue to be very impressed, not only with the hardware that Roku is putting out, but more importantly, the uh, the mind share that it's grabbing. You know, the fact that uh, uh, that they're reaching out and that they have a foothold in the type of people who you know, would never have heard of the show frame rate. You know, um, as, as I pointed out before, my in-laws, my parents-in-law uh, picked up a Roku. Uh, so I don't know what their special sauce is or who they're talking to or how they're getting the word out, but, uh, but it's working out really well for them. They say I they actually, add I, I, When did Roku originally launch? Because I think I was even on Roku and I feel like in 2006 or 2007. I think it was, wow. I want to say 2007 or 2008, but yeah, that was okay. when it was marketed as the Roku Netflix player. They even had the Netflix logo on the manual. If, if I thought I could grab it real quickly, I have it over there in a pile of manuals. Uh, and then, of course, eventually they started adding channels and it just became the Roku player. And they dropped that co-branding with Netflix. But yeah, that's they have been in this game. They were in this game early. Yeah. And, it, and, and I, back then, $99 was super cheap. $99 well, is keep another mind, I guess that's what's one. surprising to me, because like Boxy was there before Roku, but then Boxy's brand has, has really faltered, whereas Not Roku's as a is hardware just dominating. play, though. Boxy was there yeah. as a software play before Roku. Good point. I think Roku had actually a deal with Blip.TV, and uh, they were putting a lot of shows from there, a lot of web series, early in the day. Right on. Uh, dude, I don't know what else there is to say. I feel like we should move on to uh, a little bit of film. Oh, I, just, I, I, I went and grabbed it. There it is. 
Oh, oh, I was wondering. Okay, because I was, I was about to say, man, this is very not like Tom. No, normally, Tom picks that up and just keeps yeah. on running. I thought I could make <laughs> but, it. Uh, I thought I could make it quickly, but for some but, yeah. reason, like I'm actually, I'm actually uh, happier that you had had irresponsibly gotten up and left the program <laughs> than, than <laughs> to think that you were there and just failing to look keep at, it. Up. Look at the schedule. There's Netflix all over it That's because crazy. basically, yeah, they're like. That's all you got. Plus, like you, we complain about the the selection on Netflix now. Sometimes, back then there was there was almost nothing. Like, so all right, like now we could jump forward. Canadian yes. Netflix. So film. Now film. let's move on to the film film. I think this is really an interesting test case. Saturday Night Live has started its own YouTube channel. Uh, Broadway Video, Lauren Michaels Production Company, is operating it. They've contracted it out to a company to help them run it. And across the world, you'd be able to get about 2,500 clips from across all 38 seasons of Saturday Night Live. Uh, 2,000 more clips are on their way, so you'll you'll eventually have close to 5,000 clips in there. And you'll be wa able to watch them in almost every country in the world except the United States of America. What? Where they oh, with Yahoo and Hulu. So mo all, most of the full shows go to Hulu and a few clips, and the rest of the clips go to Yahoo, and that's a one-year deal with Yahoo there. So you, you you don't get to watch the Saturday Night Live YouTube channel in the U.S. Now, so I, is, I just did is, a search right now. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Casey. I, I'm, I'm, just to be clear, so essentially what you're saying is Canada has universal health care, same-sex marriage, and Saturday Night Live. Yes, right. so it. now that they have it's those, they just can stop writing us and complaining. Of, I'm moving they're back. Just, That's it. They're just that much in front of Massachusetts. Just <laughs> <laughs> uh, Okay, so like right now, when I look up on YouTube for SNL, uh, there is a channel, um, uh, NBC Network Shows, uh, but they but they have SNL episodes for sale, which I assume, of course, is a, obviously a different deal for $1.99 a piece. Um, I, I, I can't decide how I felt about this when I read this, Tom. On the one hand... It's like, well, that's stupid, derber, derber. But then, but then, like, that's what it means for somebody to buy an exclusive. That's why it made news when Yahoo uh, secured all the rights to that back catalog. And to be honest, um, I think Yahoo is the big winner in all of this. I think that Yahoo is very quickly, I, I think the more as we watch this roll out, it's a very smart play on their part. And this is what it means to be playing that Monopoly game. I think they grab some good territory and I think they're going to win a lot of public mind share for it. Like, I now know I'm programmed that if I want to see an SNL thing and I don't want to have to pay for the episode, uh, I'm going to go to, uh, oh, look at that. YouTube.com slash Saturday Night Live. Not the NBC promotional channel. This is the actual right. YouTube.com slash Saturday Night Live. Here's the, here's, the, here's the really frustrating part, right? I'm going to go to the main page again here. Tina Fey hosting this Saturday. And you'll say, oh, my gosh, this is great. Oh, I want to see this Bush endorsement. That was so funny back then. Uh, oh. The uploader has not made this video available, and it does that on every one. You don't know. That's hilarious that it shows it off. Click it. Yeah. Wow. So they give you. They uh, well, give you congrats the, to to Yahoo. <laughs> good goodbye, people. <laughs> well, well done, Yahoo. Now, if you could only update your site so it looked nice. They're working They're on it. Slowly getting. Really. There. They had, they had all know. these clips to go through and add metadata to, right? They were busy. Yes. <laughs> yes sure. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, and that Yahoo agreement only lasts for a year. So at the end of a year, all of a sudden, all those clips might disappear from Yahoo. Just, uh, in the world. All right. Well, there's all right. That. Uh, do we, do, Casey, do you know how our scan lines segment works on frame rate? This is new since the last time we had you on the show. No, sir. Okay. Let's, uh, let's explain it. Uh, usually it's, oh, no, no. Yes. But, uh, yeah, play, play the song and then we'll explain it. Why not? <laughs> Plus okay, so an awesome song. what we do is we take usually six stories. Today we're doing nine because we're trying to leave a little extra room for Breaking Bad. So we took some stories out of one place, put them in another. Each story we can only talk about for 60 seconds. If one of us gets to the end of the 60 seconds and feels like we really have one lot more to say, we can add another 60 seconds. Each of us can only do that once, though. Are you in? Are, these Are you ready to rock? Yeah, yeah, I got it. All right. All right. Go All ahead and, and why don't you kick it off for us, Tom? I will start it with the hopster. Uh, get that get that clock rolling. Okay, yeah, hopster <laughs> is Netflix for kids. It is essentially a service 
that says we're going to be like Netflix. We're going to cost about the same much, eight, eight to ten dollars a month, but we're only going to have kids stuff. So you don't have to sit there and go, oh, I have to put the parental controls on or wait a minute. It's a little weird. I want to make sure I keep an eye on them because they might go venture into a corner of YouTube I don't like. Brian, what do you think? Is this uh, good? Uh, look, do this? As, as the father of kids, um, uh, I'm a big fan of the idea of Netflix for kids. That's why I use Netflix for kids. It's exactly like Hopster, only they have massive leverage and amazing uh, 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 exclusivity licenses. They're able to get all the content my kids actually care about, and they appear to have more than the reported $1 million in the bank that Hopster has. I've got 10 Casey. seconds. And no. I have no kids, so I couldn't really care at all. <laughs> Good for them. That's all you needed. Great. <laughs> and now, now watch Casey throw down. And I want an extra 60 seconds. Yeah, <laughs> yeah to just go off on this. Uh, all right, next story. Target going head-to-head -head with iTunes and Amazon with the launch of the ticket video service. Uh, I got to admit, I just sort of glanced over this story. It looked to me, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, Tom, that this is the equivalent of like uh, when Walmart started to undercut iTunes's service. They, uh, they, uh, it's, it's another competitor with uh, leveraging their already big uh, yeah. brick and mortar retail brand, just it's doing a familiar service. Targets Voodoo, and it's part of Ultraviolet. Plus, they give you ten free movies. So I went and got ten free movies from Target today. And guess what? When I go to Voodoo, there are those ten free Target movies now. Ultraviolet totally worked in this particular what? instance. That's crazy pants. I would never have believed it. A service uh, worked at is advertised? I know. It's insane. All right, Casey, real quick, 10 seconds. Are you going to use this surface? The question really for me is, uh, do you need to enter a credit card? Because anything yes. you need to enter a credit card for something for free, I skip. Yep. Oh, you don't no, have to enter, enter it to get the free movies. Just saying. Amazon is trying to say, look, okay, we're competing with Netflix with our Amazon Instant Prime service. That's the one where you get free shipping on things, but then we also throw in this video streaming service. So we're going to differentiate it even more by saying you can now download for 48 hours certain movies and TV shows from Amazon Instant Prime. So it's like Netflix still, but you can actually save stuff to watch when you don't have an internet connection. This is huge, Tom. We are, Think about it. Just last week, we had the story that, that YouTube was letting the leash out a little bit farther. The fact that, that we now that there's an established way to make money with streaming video, they're able to you know, let that leash just a little bit longer. It, like, Does this matter to you at all, Casey, or do you even care about being able to hold on to it for sh such a short time? I think it's, a, it's great that they're doing this because it'll work. It'll be great for people who are taking flights across the country or across the world. They won't have to be connected. And that's always a big deal when you can't get on Wi-Fi on a plane. Yeah, I think you nailed it because, uh, because of course, they block Wi-Fi on, on a lot of flights. Uh, or, I mean, they block Netflix. Uh, all right, next story, $35,000. You got that sitting in your pocket, Tom? Just a little, little well, loose pocket change? I don't know. What do I get for my $35,000, Brian? Because, you know, maybe I do. How about the same movies that you'll be able to download, uh, like, in six months? That's, a, that's amazing. So I get in-theater movies, and all I have to do is pay $35,000 for the setup. Uh, no, well, yeah, and, and the $500 per show. You got $500 per show, right? $500 per show, but I get in-theater movies, and I could just watch them on anything I want. Uh, no, no, you can watch them once, just, just the one time. Um, and, uh, also you might have to kind of submit to a little bit of, of, a little bit of a background check. We might need to investigate you so just I spent $35,000 to get the privilege to pay $500 to watch a 1080p movie in a room that has fewer than 25 seats. And I have to have a background check done on me. Uh, yeah. $600 okay. if you want 3d. No, I don't have $35,000. Oh, okay. If I was Casey. the 1%, this would be freaking awesome. <laughs> yes, I agree. Uh, well, uh, I, you know what? I, I will use an extension on this right, because we took good. we took uh, 60 seconds to explain the whole story on this. I actually think that no, on the one hand, this is horrific and it's it's intrusive. Uh, it's a giant chore, but there exists a a level of person for whom money is no object, and and I don't blame them for not wanting to go to movie theaters. Uh, and I actually think this might be a very reasonable thing, as as Casey said, if you're the one percent. They're saying if you want to go through a subset of the things an actual theater has to go through to run movies, then we'll let you buy movies from us. And they'll be a lot cheaper than the theater has to pay. And, yeah, and like I said, 
Yeah. Like I said, yeah. if I was the 1%, I would definitely do it because I get anxiety in the movie theaters from people who be behave badly. I absolutely oh my hate people who just brush my seat and who talk and who check their phones. And I, I just, I want to rage out GTA 5 style on them. Also, all of the rooms in my house have fewer than 25 seats, so I could put it anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Apple got sued by a bunch of people who were mad that Apple called the first half of season five of Breaking Bad season five and called the second half, with ha which happened a lot later in the airing schedule, the final season. Because they thought when they bought at a really cheap price the first half of the season, they were going to get the second half too. And it turns out Apple just gave up and said, fine, we're going to give you a $22.99 gift card. Knock yourselves out. So Okay, so $22.99, they thought they were buying all, what, 16 episodes, and instead exactly. they only got eight. Exactly. Um, I got to admit, I'd, I'd be kind of ticked too, uh, and, and granted, it's not Apple's fault that AMC decided to screw over that particular audience, but... Um, Apple you know, that's, should not that's... have called it season five. They should have called it half of season five, but at the same yes. time, it was very clear that you were only getting eight episodes. Yeah. Come on. Well, and, and plus also, like, store credit, such a BS way to handle that. Casey, do you it's care about this? false advertising. They needed to do this, and they did, and I'm glad they did. Man, Casey's See, like I'm, the I'm right reigning champion. I'm good at this. Brilliant at this. She, yeah. She's the best at scan lines. I will give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, Casey, I'll just go straight to you on this one. Do you use the Google Play Store? I don't. Uh, well, the headline here reads, Google Play Movies and TV Update adds on-device menu streamlines episode selection. Uh, so my guess is since you don't, uh, you're probably an eye person, aren't you? I am. Um, I use yeah. I use Google Plus a lot, and I use Google, and I've changed all my uh, my apps in my iPhone to be all Google. But when it comes to buying music and watching TV, I'm all over my Xbox and my Apple TV. Yeah, so. one of the biggest uh, one of the biggest changes is uh, as you browse through your TV shows, they change the formatting so that you're able to see more shows at a time instead of. Uh, focusing on on you know one series of shows, you're able to kind of see the wider ecosystem. Uh, again, that's uh, that's smart, Tom. Do you got anything to say on it? I, this is great. I think it's funny that Sean Buckley over to Gadget wrote like, since you've been using Chromecast, you've probably been playing around with the Google Play Store. And I'm like, since I've been using Chromecast, no, I haven't touched it <laughs> once. <laughs> Sorry. The Rakuten-owned Wuwaki TV, W-U-A-K-I, it's, uh, it's actually based in Spain, is coming to the UK. They're coming out of their beta test, and they're going to compete with Love Film and Netflix by curating. Now, you can still, they, they're one of those combo things where you can still buy and download and rent movies, but they also have a streaming service, and part of that streaming service is that they're going to give you high-quality movies and refresh the content every week. So they're basically trying to take the we can't get licenses to everything all the time and spinning it as we've carefully selected awesome mm. content for you. Well, and that's, that's not the, I love that we live in a world where they can get away with doing that, and it works, because to be honest, that's pretty much the, uh, the 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 model we're doing on scam stuff. It's like uh, we have very few items on that little online store, but everything is something that I got that, that put a lot of thought into adding it on there. Casey, what, what do you think? I think it could be really good because HBO Go is also curated, but the problem with it for me is the cutesy name. <laughs> I Wookie. honestly don't feel like cutesy names ever really do very well. Wacky. Wacky. <laughs> Uh, all right, so and let's Oscar. talk about the Apple TV. You guys, uh, since you're, you're an eye device girl, Casey, I'm sure you love the Apple TV. They get uh, live Major League Soccer and Disney Junior Kids content via new channels. Uh, to be honest, like soccer, I'm sure to someone out there, that's going to be a big deal. Uh, I know to my family, this Disney Junior Kids content might be the thing that finally gets me to pick up the, the new Apple TV. I, I, I had an original 1.0 Apple TV that's useless now. Uh, so I've been hesitant to jump back on, but but now to get the kids' content, I might do that. I have a 1.0, and I also have the new Apple TV. I love it, and the best thing about it for me is that uh, the Netflix app works better on it than it does on the Xbox. I get a higher quality streaming, which we might even talk wow. about later. Uh, much higher quality. And, Ever since uh, they've started adding more apps, I've been using my Apple TV for Netflix more often. Yeah. The more the merrier. You know, I'm not into sports or kids stuff, but, you know, the more people use it, the better. I just Sky wonder news. if it'll survive the, uh, the, the Xbox One. That'll be interesting. 
And finally, well, let's, let's see what the quality is on the Xbox One. Yeah. Netflix has opened the gates to Super HD for everyone. Remember, if, if you recall, recall, Netflix would only offer Super HD if you were a customer of an ISP that was putting one of Netflix's caching servers in the ISP's colo. And Time Warner complained, like, we're perfectly capable of running Super HD, apparently. This totally negates all of Jeff Book's arguments about HBO that we talked about earlier in frame rate. But we could totally run Netflix without having a special server. And Netflix has said, great, fine. You can have Super HD. Everybody can have Super HD. We're opening it up to everybody. We will detect, and if the stream isn't getting enough bits, we will adapt to that stream. So now they're saying, okay, uh, Time Warner, let's see it. Let's see you actually carry Super HD for all your customers. Man, the and only that. oh, sorry, go ahead, Casey. And that's kind of what I was speaking to before, is that for some reason, my when I try to play Netflix on my Xbox, it just compresses to this really terrible quality. But as soon as I put my Apple TV on, I get the high quality, great, amazing looking version. Ladies I will say, and gentlemen, since we're done. The queen of scan lines, Casey McKinnon. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, because I didn't get to chime in, I will say this. The only thing about that story that doesn't make Netflix be just an awesome company is the fact that they rebranded HD, calling it Super HD. Like, I mean, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's you just You already 1080p. used an extension, Brian. I know. And now this you is, just, I'm cheating. And now you just yes. added, you just they, totally I'm now using your extension. <laughs> I used well, your extension they, and, and just be glad I'm not using Casey's extension, too. And they do have like all those Marvel movies on there. So, in a way, it is Super HD. It is, okay, I it see is what you literally did there. super. Bad trombones. <laughs> Thank you, Casey. Uh, hey, some of you guys probably noticed at home that we're moving awfully fast this episode of Frame Rate. I don't know that we got a chance to explain that we were carving out extra time for Breaking Bad, and we're coming up on the winter movie draft. Do you want to? Do you want to peek in on some of the highlights? Do you have like one movie that you're most excited about uh, picking up, so I can we use that knowledge to defeat you? Yeah, I think uh, Runner Runner is going to be a top one. I think uh, people should really. <laughs> Throw down a lot of money for Old Boy. I think that's going to outgross everything. Uh, I'm pretty much looking for the movies I don't recognize in this. Yeah, in yeah this. exactly. Yeah. Well, some of these, like you, you see a title that um, that you don't recognize, like Frozen. You know, and then and then you look it up. You're like, oh, that's the Disney offering. That's definitely themed in uh, you know winter. And then uh, you've got stuff like uh, Free Birds, uh, which I didn't know this, but um, uh, Scott Mosier of Smodcast fame is working on that movie. I heard them talking about it on the Smodcast recently. Uh, and then some of these you assume are just going to be explosive knockouts like Anchorman, I think will be a big one. Um, the uh, uh, Some of them are weird, like uh, Walking with Dinosaurs. It's a movie based on the stage show that was based on the Discovery documentary where they did computer-generated dinosaurs and somehow looks terrible in its actual CG. But it's dinosaurs and releases right before Christmas. So it's hard for me to uh, to really gauge something like that. The upshot of all this is we know like one or two of you out there are really pissed that this is still happening and you can skip forward. The rest of you stick around. After the spoiler zone, we will have the winter movie draft with not only Brian and myself, but Justin Robert Young, of course, Casey McKinnon will be joining yep. us as well. And Father Robert Balasser and Jeff Kanata will round out the draftees this time so i'm definitely looking forward to that let's move on to what we're watching what we're watching we'll take breaking bad as stipulated uh but casey has there any, been any other videos anywhere it doesn't have to be on television any kind of stuff you've been watching lately i have been uh doing shakespearean theater recently and so nice. i have been catching up on a canadian show that came out a few years called slings and arrows it was suggested to me by two different americans and so i thought all right i'll give it a chance and uh there's a lot of canadian accents that even i don't have <laughs> but <laughs> it's a really good show and it's on amazon instant it's on prime if you have prime so i got to watch it it was great Really, really great. It sort of centers on a theater where a ghost plays a major character, a guy who's already died. And there he is. You can see him on the screen. Oh, cool. So, they have, um, like, goofy accents or something? Well, you know, actually, it's uh, the female lead keeps saying sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> you yeah. want to borrow your crayons, give them back tomorrow. 
Nice. But it's it's great if you appreciate Shakespeare. Um, it has tons of references to different Shakespearean plays, a lot of quotes, and it's um, it gets better uh, in season two. Season two is amazing. Season three is great. Uh, and it also has Mark McKinney from the, um, the Kids in the Hall. Oh, wow. It's actually written by Mark McKinney and has no him kidding. in it. Oh, that's really yeah. cool. So that's very awesome. good, very good show. Only Brian, three seasons right. and very short. <laughs> Uh, okay, so let me let me run through stuff real quick. First of all, uh, somebody forwarded to me, and I think they meant us. Uh, they probably forwarded it to you too, but it was a link to uh, your movie sucks a YouTube breakdown of uh, of, of um, the Walking Dead seasons one and two, and it was exquisite. It reminded me a lot of the style of the uh, Red Letter Media. Phantom Menace reviews makes some very compelling arguments. Talks about how uh, Frank Darabont really leveraged his friendships with these very talented actors, put everything in, and AMC repaid his trust by slashing the budget and insisting, uh, you know, that more uh, episodes like they replace zombies with like sounds of zombies. So we don't have to pay for for uh, makeup artistry or anything like it's it's extraordinary when you see the case laid out for them. Highly recommend it. Just search uh, YMS Walking Dead. He's released part one. Part two is coming soon. Uh, continue to watch uh, The Legend of Korra, which uh, uh, sort of slowing down. Um, I, I, I don't know if they're setting the stage for a big thing or not. Um, uh, watch the rest of that season of Archer that I was watching on Netflix. And you can thank me doing my taxes uh, for the fact that Netflix, uh, you know, taxes is mainly just moving things from one column to another. So it's like you're thinking symbolically. So your language part of the brain is still free. And so when it said, hey, man, why don't you watch Futurama? I was like, fine, I'll do that. I haven't watched Futurama in forever. Uh, man, I feel terrible that I've not been watching Futurama because it really is freaking awesome and clever and very up-to-date and and brilliant in all those ways. Uh, and I went back and watched The Manhattan Project uh, from the early 80s uh, with John Lithgow, and that definitely held up. It was really cool to watch that. Uh, and, of course, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which I assume we'll talk about in the, in the spoiler zone. Yeah, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. myself as well. I'm continuing on Orange is the New Black and absolutely enjoying it. Uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I just eat like candy because they're only 20 minutes at a, at a pop. And interestingly, I watched a little bit of The Goldbergs. This is a new uh, show that is set in the 80s. It's kind of the That 70s Show or Wonder Years for the 80s. The backstory is really interesting. It's a writer who grew up in the 80s, and he's like, these are all true stories from my youth. These are all based on my family. There's even some stuff that we've had to tone down for, from what actually happened. But it still felt like, oh, come on, this would never happen because it's pitched as a comedy, and it's very over-the-top 80s in your face. I didn't really finish the first episode. Um, I don't know if I'll be going back or not. It's got a good cast. It's got a competent cast. Uh, I just, I don't know. Maybe I'm just done with that kind of period sitcom or maybe i well, uh, so don't want to confront shows. my own age and my own so, imminent death so 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 many eminence that's that's a bit dark so many of those shows start off with a gimmick that um that gets them on the radar of america but then they quickly fall in love with the actual characters and then they, they sort of almost just bail on it and you barely notice that it was there uh, although you still saw you know some of that pop up from time to time with that 70s show uh i don't know i, I I don't really watch sitcoms, though, so, so there. Well, now it's time for feedback. Now it's time for feedback with Brian and Tom on Frame Radio, yeah. Houdini7 is already writing my uh, uh, eulogy in the chat room there. Thank you. <laughs> I believe Appreciate it. That. Uh, you, well, don't worry, your wiki page has already been picked up as well. <laughs> <laughs> we got a video question from Adam12. Yeah. This is awesome. Let yep. roll. Let's take a look Hello, at that. Tom and Brian, Adam12 from the chat room here. Um, last week, you had ended frame rate by asking what you guys should tackle watching next now that Breaking Bad is over. Very simple, guys. You need to take the Babylon 5 challenge. Um, there has been mm. no show on – matter of fact, it was the first show on television to have a single narrative thread that ran from the very first episode all the way through to the last episode. Um, the creators behind the show mapped out their five-season story arc before they ever shot an episode. They knew where they were going. They knew what they were doing. And this allowed them to do things on television that had never been seen before, Sh things that we take for granted now, long-term story threads. Uh, great characters, characters that change and grow. All of this stuff was done in Babylon 5. It talks about so much. Everything that great science fiction 
needs to talk about or does talk about is here in this show. Wonderful characters, wonderful music, wonderful action sequences. Um, it's all there. And you guys doing yourself a great service by not watching it. So give it a try, guys. I think it's time. Enough lally gagging about. Oh, and before I go, anyone who says that the show is dated and unwatchable because of their uh, video effects is clearly not watching the same show I've been watching. And let's face it, someone saying dated effects is not a reason to watch a great piece of science fiction is just silly. With that logic, we would never watch things like classic Star Trek or, or Twilight Zone or Doctor Who or any of that stuff. Great storytelling will transcend limited special effects. And face it, this stuff doesn't look bad. Man, Give that's a, a good guys. point. Busting right, out, even like, in taking an over-the-show up... graphic, it doesn't look bad. Yeah, well, and Very plus good. also... I, I think he nailed it when he said uh, you, you can't love Doctor Who and uh, and fuss about the graphics in in you know Babylon Five. Uh, I, I guess <laughs> yeah, well, it, depends really, which doctor, I mean, it depends on which Doctor Who you mean. Because a lot of people only like the modern Doctor Who, and those graphics are probably s superior to Babylon Five. But I, the point is well taken, which is d you don't not watch Babylon Five because of special effects. That's just silly. Yes, I you know what? Agree. Agreed. Agreed. I love that he's suggesting Babylon 5, but I've been wanting to watch Babylon 5 for a really long time, and it's not on Amazon uh, Amazon's Prime anymore. It was, apparently. Uh, and I was going to watch it after Deep Space Nine. Oh, and it used to be on Netflix, apparently, and it's not there. So I'd love to do it, but where am I supposed to watch it? That's what I was about to ask, so I'm kind of sad to hear that that's, <laughs> that that's the case. Um I don't know. We'll figure out something. Somebody, you know what will happen, of course, is uh, if there's one negative about Babylon 5, it's the outspoken nature of its most uh, uh, passionate fans. So I wouldn't be surprised if all of a sudden just, you know, DVDs just started showing up on our doorsteps. That's not a suggestion. Please don't send us DVDs. Uh, but we'll figure wow, out some Brian, way to do just it. Just pitching for DVDs. Okay, fine. Come on, all right, come on. <laughs> From Sandy, Sunny Manitoba in the chat room, Breaking Bad is a show that some have said was a reason to get Netflix, sort of like the way The Matrix was for DVD sales. Um, I'm assuming, I, I haven't heard this, but I assume he's saying that The Matrix uh, sold a lot of DVDs. Uh, do you think that Breaking Bad is a show that could have had the success on Netflix as it had on AMC? I don't think so, as Breaking Bad has had that water cooler talk that most shows do not have, thus proving that binge watching is fine for shows that have finished, but not for shows in production. Um, oh, and he suggests that we call this episode All's Good That Ends Bad. So there's that. Uh, uh, I'll tell you what, this is not a academic question. This is something that we're actually watching play out in real time because... Uh, uh, with House of Cards. House of Cards is straight to Netflix. It is every bit as rich and detailed and fascinating and cliffhangery and morally ambiguous. It has all the elements that, uh, that I loved about uh, Breaking Bad, maybe a slightly more conventional style of, of storytelling. But uh, I, I think basically watch House of Cards and watch it continue to blow up the interest and charts and, and excitement of, of uh, at least Americans. And I think that you'll see that, yeah, I believe Breaking Bad could have been a success just on Netflix. I think that I don't accept Sunny Manitoba's premise that Breaking Bad success is attributable to water cooler talk because I am a person who caught up on Breaking Bad, right? I went and we 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 streamed it until we caught up and then we started watching the last two seasons on actual television and most of the people I know were never at the same point as me even if they were current there were plenty of times where Jason had to leave the room during Spoiler Zone because, well, he hadn't watched it yet. Or Sarah Lane, who's getting it from an entirely different way. I, I dispute that fact. I think Breaking Bad is the poster child for the fact that you don't need the water cooler talk to sync up perfectly for people to get really excited. Because you still had lots of conversations where people are like, well, where are you in the series? Okay, let's talk about that. And you'd have great conversations. Right. Yeah, uh, I don't finally, think it's a water cooler situation because in my case, I I didn't I don't have a water cooler, so yeah, there's that too, right? You know, That's a very good point. I have point. Twitter and um and the TV was on one day and I saw t this Tuco scene which had me sucked in and I had to start from the beginning. So that's how it started for me. And Mick from Down Under Shell Harbor uh, says, from my point of view, we're talking about streaming versus downloading. From my point of view, it's always going to be download. My internet is slow, 
that streaming is not always possible. My caps are small, 36 gigabytes a month with 12 gigabyte allowance for peak, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. And 24 gigabytes, is he saying gigabits or gigabytes? I think it's 24 gigabit per second off peak. A lot of Australian ISPs inflict this type of stupid bandwidth cap structure on their customers. I had a very interesting conversation with Chad Johnson of This Week in YouTube and OMG Craft fame. And he was saying that he wants to stream. He doesn't like the idea of having to download and having to have space for that and keep track of where the files are. Streaming is definitely more convenient. I think it may be a generational thing to some extent where people growing up with more constant access just say, yeah, I'll just stream it. And if the bandwidth isn't around, whatever, I'll go find bandwidth somewhere else. You know, and I think that problem gets less and less over time. Whereas folks like us are like, yeah, I don't know if I want to eat up my cap because I'm a cheap old man. Uh, I can find some storage. I can put on a new hard drive, do it myself. Well, and, and we like it. We like it that way. Think about it. This uh, The younger generation is growing up in a world where there's never been a time without the Internet. The Internet is not something new that you had and then you lost from time to time when a storm hit. Like, that's the way I still feel that way about cable television, you know. Uh, where it's like cable was there until it went out for a while and then came back. And you never really fully recovered from that lack of trust. And I feel like we are dealing with that with our internet restrictions and we still want to hold our media, but I think it's an artifact of a bygone time. And nowadays, you know, none of us worry about our power. We know that if the power goes out, it's a tremendously huge deal. And uh, usually it goes out for, you know, as little as, you know, five, 10 minutes or seconds at a time. Um, I, I think Chad's probably on the right side of this. I think that... Uh, that the entire idea of getting stuff out of the cloud is antiquated and we should let go. All right. Well, there are a few people in the chat room who are just like, when are they going to shut up about important things and start talking about Breaking Bad? Uh, so yeah. that's going to wrap us up for the main portion of frame rate. If you don't want to be spoiled on Breaking Bad and the season finale, stop now. But thank you for watching. Twit.tv slash FR. You can find us live on live.twit.tv every Monday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern, 3.30 p.m. Pacific. And email us. Send us an email, frame rate at twit.tv. We'll see you on the other side of the spoiler zone. All right, we'll wait. Dude. Oh, what's up? Oh, hey, well, I, was, we're, I know we're jumping right in the spoiler zone, but uh, somebody sent in a bumper to promote I, our uh, frame I have rate. It, I have it all draft. loaded up. You want me to play it? <laughs> okay. No, 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 no. We'll save oh. that for after. Let's go straight to the spoiler zone first. All right, let's do it. Jump right into the spoiler zone. Silent Green is people! Oh! Not much to talk about, really. Um, it's okay, right, you guys? <laughs> uh, yes. Okay, first of all, let's say the things that need to be said. Um, uh, it was very good. It uh, it, it uh, left say me the things feeling... you need to say after your Twitter fight with the uh, internet <laughs> last night. Yeah. yeah. That's fine. No, 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 no. Yes, let me make it very, very clear. It was very well done. It was a delightful series. It was a poetic ending uh, that, uh, that that was was very artfully shot, and uh, you, you cared, you felt everything. You you got a great surprise. I would say the best part of the entire show was him showing up uh, at his old partners from uh, Gray Matters. The fact that they ended last episode with him obviously fired up about something, uh, you know, seeing them and showing up. At the time, of course, you're led to believe that it's with rage and jealousy. But instead, uh, in typical uh, Walter White fashion, he's got a longer view of the situation and realizes that they are a way to legitimately get the money to his family, so that can happen at all. Uh, one weird thing after that scene was it sort of it, it took the fire out of everything. I didn't I didn't care. Like I, I kind of didn't care what happened to anyone really because uh, I knew the kids were taken care of. Uh, I knew that uh, Walter, you know, was was um, got his goal right. That's all he ever cared about was getting money to his family, and now that was done. So it's like it weirdly made me not care if he lived or die all of a sudden. Did, did either of you guys feel that? No, not at all. I still wanted to know how he resolved his situation because that has been one of the things that has pulled me through this entire series is why is he continuing to do what he's doing? Because, yeah, he's doing it for his family, and we finally get him to admit when he talks to Skyler, 
okay, I did it for me. That to me was the more more of the like, oh wow, okay, he's done, right? Because he's finally reached his his re realization about who he is and what he is. And from then on, it was more, let's see how are they gonna how are they gonna wrap this up? I, I know they're gonna put the bow on it. Is it going to be a big floofy red bow or a nice, you know, little string bow? But, you know, that was the point where I got to, like, I think I know where this is going, sort of. Uh, Casey, what about you? Well, I assumed that he was going to die because it is a tragedy. And uh, but for me, I think the best part of it was the little details, the little faints and the little teases that they did. So the... Um, the the laser pointers was brilliant because of course I'm watching that scene and thinking as a filmmaker I'm like oh they just did did that with laser pointers and sure enough the story <laughs> had it that they did it with laser pointers um, also the keys when he looked like he was about to hand the keys to uh, Jesse uh, so I thought he was going to hand the keys to Jesse and then like you know kill all the guys or you know do something like that but um, just it was like a lot of little faints even when Jesse got into the El Camino at the end, he backed out and he went and it looked like he was going to hit him with the car, yeah. but he went completely around. I mean, all these little feints kept me on the edge of my seat. And uh, honestly, I, I don't think you could have ended that show any better. It was, um, it was, it was perfect. You know, you can't go with a, a, you can't screw it up for the fans the way Lost did or, you know, have it too weird the way Battlestar Galactica did. You know, there's just so many, there's been so many different endings that have freaked out the fans and, and they obviously didn't want to do something that was too crazy that they were actually just, you know, pushing, pushing the fans away. They needed to okay, do something well that, that, that had closure. That exactly speaks to my concern. And, and uh, I tried to express it over Twitter and obviously... Uh, was wrong, as everyone made sure to tell me. But, uh, you know, Lost and um, Battlestar Galactica had endings that, um, you know, with varying degrees of success. Uh, we'll say those were two stories that tried to end in a grand, epic, surprising, it all comes together manner. Uh, and, and I would say they swung for the fences and tried to offer a surprise. Uh, and they essentially whiffed by most fans' accounts. They were like, oh, well, I le was left with blah, 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 blah. It bummed me out to see Breaking Bad so obviously try to be the opposite of all those. Like Breaking Bad bunted, you know, Breaking ba Breaking Bad, the bases were loaded. Here's my sports ball metaphor. You ready for this, Tom? You play, you yeah, watch yeah. The, the baseball. No, I actually uh, the bases were loaded. To your, your metaphor to Eileen last night, so I have a response prepared. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, they, the bases were loaded. Uh, and they, they rather than, than hit a grand slam in epic style, they knew all they needed to bunt, so they just bunted. And it's like all you got was fulfillment on promises. And again, it was beautiful <laughs> fulfillment, and I'm not going to ding any of that, but they bunted. And, why, uh, and why I do, just wanted – go ahead. Why do I have this idea that you would have um, put him in a coma for the last five years? And wait, that wait, all of this was a dream. Mean? No, 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 no. That's certainly yeah, not what I mean. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Wait, what What would you have done, Brian? What would you oh, have done? Oh, there's plenty of options. There's plenty of options. Okay, the, what are the, the for options example, then? Uh, well, in this case, the only transformation we got was the fact that he admitted out loud that he liked it. Why not take that was you said it was your favorite part. What if that was the whole end of the story where it's just like, you know, he gets his family paid and then he just sits at the table and just dominates, you know, that the, was as, not as my I put favorite it, part. My, I, what I was saying is that's the part where I knew where Walt's story was was going for sure. Where you sure, you sure, were but, saying when he when he had settled the money, you were like, well, now the story, now Walt's story is over. Everything else doesn't matter. To me, there was still that part left of like, when is he going to have the real, realization of who he has become? And that was the point when that happened for me. Sure, sure. Okay, but the my, my point is, um, uh, I am not so much a fan of the magic machine gun, uh, the literal Deus Ex Machinima gun. Uh, it, it, uh, I, I felt like that was, um, as somebody in the chat just said, Walt's entire plan hinged on getting a good parking spot, which it, it was, a, it, it did take me a little bit out of it. It was a little over the top. It was one of the sillier constructs they've done in the show. And again, I'm not knocking the show. I love the show. I, love the the journey. Train? I wouldn't trade anything. Uh, the train, the train, the train, I think would work in reality. I don't think that machine that, gun that would work, work in reality. That would work in reality if he got a good parking He's spot. He's a freaking scientist, <laughs> dude. Okay, but uh, at that well, point, and, and again, I, 
I've used the I, word cartoonish before. It is cartoonish you that somebody your disbelief. Uh, well, no, no, no. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Uh, look, I, I, you can have a really good meal and wonder what it would have been like with ice cream on top. I just, I was really hoping for some ice cream. But on you're not top. telling us what that good... ice cream is. Well, okay, well, no, it's not me, my me, job. Me, I'm not a goddamn let, chef. I don't make me, ice cream. Let me jump in uh, in here because. I, I feel like I have a handle on what Brian's saying, even though I don't feel the same way. And and this is where it's very important in these situations to say there isn't a right answer to was the Breaking Bad finale good. There actually is not right. a right answer to was the Lost finale good. There is consensus in varying amounts, and that's what carries the day, right? The consensus with Battlestar Galactica is people didn't like it. I've met people who liked it just fine. It's all a matter of taste. And what I feel like Brian's saying is... Maybe it wasn't a bunt, because a bunt implies, you know, you're, you're, you're trying to move the runner over, not going to get too far into baseball. This was a double, right? Double's great. Double does yes. the job. Double's actually better than a single, right? This is above average, and I believe this is an above average finale, and I don't think Brian disagrees, but Brian wanted a grand slam. Brian wanted fireworks. He wanted drama. He wanted this to surprise him, and it didn't. I don't think this was like blow my mind episode. But I was very happy with this episode because I feel like that is very difficult to blow your mind in a finale and also wrap it up satisfactorily. And if they're going to choose, if they're going to say, well, we don't think we can do both. So we're going to wrap it up satisfactorily and we're going to keep you guessing a little bit. and We're going to have some drama. And we're going to have some cool stuff. I'm glad they chose this rather than to swing for the fences and strike out. Absolutely. And yes. I agree. I guess uh, for a show that was as bold as Breaking Bad, to see what what it seems like all three of us agree was that a very intentional strategy of playing it safe was kind of a bummer. Because I, I wouldn't call that's it not what I think of when safe. I think of that show. I think I think playing it safe would would have been a different show. I think they took some risks, but they didn't take as many risks as you would have liked. You wanted you wanted okay. to see some like serious well, I mean, risks. What, what 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 were the risks? He reconciles with his kids, gets them paid. He rescues Jesse. He by doesn't killing all the Nazis with kids. science. Playing it safe uh, would have been, to me, he comes back and Walt and him have a teary forgiveness moment where Walt Jr. says, you know, I forgive you, Dad, even if I don't understand. That would have been playing it safe. They didn't do that. He never talks to Walt Jr. That Are you is kidding just me? No, I think, I, think, I think that's crazy talk, Tom. I can think of nothing more bold than to do that. That would enrage the end. All of America and most of Canada would be enraged by that yeah, ending, but that's if they not did being it. bold. That's just pissing off your audience by doing something cliche. Unless, unless they were able to sell it and make it work. But, but you're not. You're not. Let me. I didn't think you were saying. I just want them to do stupid stuff that makes the audience mad because no. that's risky. No, 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 no. I mean, I mean, no, no. They, they, they fulfilled a contract, right? They have been promising since episode one that this dude's gonna die, and finally he died. Great. Um, they. I feel like. We would have liked it, and it could have been a compelling story if he lived and was just pure evil, and that's how it ended. I think that would have kind of been a knife in our gut, and we would have been angry and talked about it for years to come. And sure. I uh, forgive me, uh, I, uh, it is possible to fulfill a long-term promise in a way that shocks and haunts you. And specifically, yes. I think about the last episode of The Shield, and you spend the entire series, since episode one, uh, structurally, by the way, if you like Breaking Bad, it's now time for you to watch The Shield because I can guarantee you that that ending is amazing and will haunt you forever. Uh, the uh, the first episode of The Shield begins with a morally corrupt, uh, ambiguous person in his descent, uh, whereas Breaking Bad was somebody you generally liked and you watched him descend over time. The Shield is somebody you start off thinking is damned, but who kind of redeems him and you kind of want him to, to make it, but you can't believe you're thinking that because he's such a terrible person. Uh, and it ends in this haunting twist that just uh, slayed me it was just, i wanted that from breaking bad and i thought they could do it and they they didn't they didn't go for it and and but would you rather the them have tried because that is difficult I, I agree with you that it's possible but it is difficult would you rather they have tried that and fallen short yes or would you rather they have. have done this uh, you would have rather I, had a I, bad I, episode where you're like, well, they tried something, but it didn't work, and now I hate it. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I, to be honest, I don't get to decide if they pull it off or not, you know, but I do wish they had tried. That's that's the only, and that's a good way to put it, is, is you know, for, it's for them to decide if it make it or not or what the story means. But I, I wish they had tried for something 
I, they, they did try. Him, let me give you this little bit of bat behind the scenes stuff that Eileen dug out when we were talking about this in, in our own little spoiler zone uh, last night at home. She found an article where Vince Gilligan says, we actually uh, sketched out dozens of ways this ends, some in which Walt lives, some in which Walt kills Skyler. Some, you know, like they sketched out a lot of different endings and they chose this one because they felt it was the it was going to work the best. So it's not that they, you, you know, and I I know that that's not what you mean, Brian, but I just want to make sure people know. No, 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 but, not, but, but that's good. And saying it does. Vince Gilligan was lazy. It's that you wish they would have chosen one of those others and made it work. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, that's my fantasy, of of course. Um, right. But okay, so let's talk about the one thing that, that uh, I, I'd be really curious. I honestly don't know what you guys thought about it. Wait, try, and I'll on, go try. last. Ron is already starting the conspiracy theories. There's no proof Walter White died. He was just bleeding from his side. That's he, true. He's, he's dead. I That's thought true. that. I it's thought 100 that as well. dead. Come on. I know he, they didn't well, show can, him, like take his pulse, but he can come back. He can come back. Uh, be uh, r half robotic in the movie Solid Breaking White. Bad movie. Breaking okay. Bad 2030. Sorry. Uh, Breaking okay. Bad. <laughs> Let's talk about Todd dying. Um, I know. That I do feel like was a pandering. Uh, chicken thing to do. I feel like Todd should have lived just to enrage everyone. For as much as everybody hated Todd, it kills me that they gave us the satisfaction of watching him die. I, I really wish that we were just agonizing that evil lived on, but instead, like no evil lived, right? Everybody, everybody evil died. I'm fine with that. It, it, it had to happen. What, you, you really think that Jesse was not going to kill him? I, I, well, I think he would try certainly, but um, would kind of love it if he failed, and and we just had to know that. I, I don't know. It's too, it's too, too storybook. I, I, little I too wanted, storybook. See, here's the thing, Brian. You wanted different things to happen in this finale than I did, right? I wanted all these things to happen. I did not want Todd to live. I would have been pissed <laughs> if he would live, and not pissed into like they've challenged me somehow in my way. No, I would have been like that was the wrong choice. That's not what this story is about. This story is called Breaking Bad. It's about Walter White de descending into badness, not breaking evil, not becoming a mastermind because he gets close to that. It's Breaking Bad, and these are the consequences to Walter's decisions, and we should understand each of them along the way. But it's not about Nazis get away with, with things and isn't that unjust of society. I wanted these guys to get it. I wanted Todd to get it. I wanted Lydia to get it. And I didn't want Jesse to die. And I didn't want Walt Jr. and Skyler to die. But I wanted Walt to die. And I got everything I wanted. And this has been what, a show about that. In if they would have been a show with that something that I really didn't realize I wanted, that's the only thing I could think would be better than this. And I don't know what that would be. Well, I, 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 this has always been a show about imperfections, and I, I don't see why they couldn't have given us one. You know, as the Japanese call it, the wabi-sabi, the little imperfection that makes the whole piece better. The entire show I, is, I mean, the little imperfection is this is a chemistry teacher with cancer who you just are now believing should die. Like, that, they did that. They performed that on our brains. If you would have said before the show started, we're going we're gonna to give you this guy, this chemistry teacher, this geeky guy who has cancer and a son who's disabled, and we're going to make you believe that he deserves to die at the end of this. That was the premise. Uh, by the way, the, the chat room is saying pissing off the audience is not necessarily the way to go. I'm not advocating pissing off the no, audience. I'm just saying doing, you, 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 you don't have to give everyone, there's, there's what Brian? you want and there's what you think you want. Yes. Brian, here's what I'm thinking. For me, it was the journey and not the destination that mattered. And so I loved the show. The series was amazing. And there was just so much to that. And then I didn't want them to screw it up in the end. And I'm really glad that they didn't. And I feel like it was a very satisfying ending, even if it wasn't a huge, you know, cliffhanger or anything. They couldn't make a cliffhanger because it was the end. And I felt like it was a good end. It was a good tragedy. Uh, well, it's clear from the chat that uh, I'm a crazy person for not just uh, <laughs> immediately saying that is the best thing ever. Yes, apparently well, will, just doing everything it. the audience wants is the best way. I apologize. I take <laughs> I everything repeat. back. What I said on Twitter yesterday that in Brian's defense, he is crazy. But <laughs> I, think, I think it's absolutely defensible what you're saying, Brian. You wanted a different ending. There's nothing wrong with that. You're not wrong. 
So people, I mean, some people are taking issue in various levels and some people are taking issue in a, in a perfectly reasonable way. But Brian's not wrong. Brian's saying, I wanted a finale that did this and I didn't get it and I'm disappointed. And he has the, of It's course. okay though. You can write your fan fiction now, Brian. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I'm done. I'm going to kick all your asses at the movie draft now. I'm going to do it out of spite. No, I, I because I felt this way where I have not liked something that everybody else liked. And it's just... That's just the way it goes sometimes. So mm. leave them alone. <laughs> look, no, no, no. I mean, look, you guys can take it up with me on Twitter. That's fine. I'm just saying for a show that that for uh, five seasons uh, served us plates of agony, there was just no agony in this episode. There, It was a different menu than we've gotten no. from the show ever up you until right. this moment. There was not agony. This this was resolution. And and if if and if you wanted that agony just, to be brought to a peak, which is a perfectly reasonable way to end this, you're going to be disappointed. That's not what they did. Right. Exactly. So there's that. Anything else? We done here? Hmm? Uh, we oh, were going to talk about Shield. Agents of Shield. All right. We yeah. Got what did what did you what did you think of that? Let's talk about Agents of Shield. Okay. You know what? I want to talk about this because um, I saw it with a bunch of friends, and then I watched it again with my husband a few days later. And when we were watching it with our friends, we didn't know what the heck happened at the end. We were, because they there's that slow motion like yeah, look what we did. We totally like killed that dude or something. And it looks like the guy got shot in the head and he's dead. Right. And none of us in the room got it. And we had to turn to the one guy that, that was in the room who actually worked on the series and we're like, so um, what the, why the hell are they smiling and nodding in slow motion at each other? And he explained it to us. It Which was, was the night, what? night It was the night-night gun that they talked about that Fitz and Simmons talked about in the first like 10 or 15 minutes, but they were talking so fast that nobody understood what they were saying and they never reiterated it at the end. They could have had a really quick voiceover saying, the night-night gun worked, sir, you know? (laughs) And then the entire audience would have known what happened. And I actually, by watching this, this show again, I watched my husband's reaction to see like, will he get this or not? And actually halfway into the show, I asked him, hey, do you remember that gun that Fitz and Simmons were talking about? And he was like, no. <laughs> so there you go. I mean, it just, I think that was, that was a, that was a problem. Um, but aside I, from I, that, it, it felt like a very safe pilot. It was pretty I, safe. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was it was very Joss Whedon though, and it was people, much like the finale of Breaking Bad in that regard, and that was just too safe for me. I just wish it was. I wish everyone had died at the end of Agents of Shield, and then we just got a whole new cast the next episode. I really, <laughs> I really bold. felt like the like Agents of Shield. Um, Joss Whedon had taken all the knowledge that he'd learned over the years of making pilots and put it all together because I do remember the Dollhouse pilot um, was really jumbled because. Yeah. Fox didn't like it. They did reshoots. They, they you know, took something from the third episode, pushed it back, and they added sexy chicks at the beginning. And obviously, you know, they learned a lot and they they had that sexy blonde French babe who probably doesn't actually speak French and is actually American. Yeah. But there she was, you know, and, and it was to draw in those viewers in those first few minutes to make sure that uh, they were watching. Just so you could definitely came in. Guns blaze it on this and said, "I'm Joss Whedon. I did the Avengers. I get to do the show the way I want to." And and he did. This is this is unabashed Joss Whedon, and I know he's not directly responsible, but that that fast talking, quippy stuff that is pure Whedon. I ate it up. I loved it. Uh, there there are problems with the plot on this, and I think you know, give them three episodes to get their legs under them. Hopefully, we'll we'll see a better yes. pacing to the show and 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 interesting stories and all of that. But I I I liked. The sample I got. I love that they gave Coulson a mystery right off the top. They satisfied us by saying, here's why he's back, but then they also immediately turned that into a mystery. I liked that. I also so, love you're talking about the quips because the only problem, one of the problems I had with the pilot was that I'd seen all those quips in the tra- in the uh, the trailers. And so now I'm dying to see more because I actually want to see if I'm going to uh, like it or if it's the trailer that I liked, you know? I specifically avoided watching trailers for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I tried so I hard, but yeah. the internet, man. I know. Uh, did, was anyone else maybe just a little bit bothered by the the silly flying car at the end? Just I hated seemed it. a little Absolutely cheesy. Absolutely hated the flying car. <laughs> okay, good. Thank Actually, you. Actually, okay. I didn't hate it at the okay. time. I was like, that's kind of cheesy. And then the more I think about it, 
as time goes by, the more I hated it. I was like, why? But it's yes. canon, guys. It's canon. It's in I know. the books. I know. And I mean, that's, that's fine. But 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 again, like the brand of the show uh, is to is to take the fantastical and comic books, but add uh, just the amount, uh, right amount of grit and reality to make you believe it. And in that they moment, could have done it, a it became way. a total cartoon. Yes, yeah. exactly. But that's fine. It didn't ruin the show for me. Where we're going, yeah. we don't need roads. Yes, exactly. I wanted to see him throw some banana peels in the fuel tank. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? That's canon. That predates Back to the Future. Um, and oh, I think about that. You're right, huh? And it's from you know a universe where there's a guy that turns into a giant green angry guy, and there's like a guy that has a rope flying robot. I mean, really, like, what can you not believe in this universe? Well, but they, but they, again, it's not it's not the stuff. It's the it's the way it's presented. You know, it's like um, you know, I believed all of Men in Black, and that's more ridiculous than all of that put together. But they created a universe that sucked me into that, and uh, and Agents of Shield spent most of its time trying to create a plausible, real, like, yeah, superheroes are something we hear about, but now look at this, this is right in front of us. And like, oh, by the way, flying car, you know, it was just, it was just a bit much. Sadly, there's just too much awesome to talk about, and we need to get into the winter movie draft so we can make way for This Week in YouTube, which if you're used to tuning in at this time to watch This Week in YouTube, it's going to be an hour later for totally unrelated reasons, but happily allows us some extra time to do the movie draft. So thanks, everybody, for watching The Spoiler Zone. Casey McKinnon, thank you for being with us. It was awesome to have you, as always. Thank uh, you. Any, any last words, anything to toss out there for people before we go? Yeah. Beats no me. follow her on Twitter, Casey McKinnon, <laughs> MCK. Sure. Yeah. You can follow me on Twitter. I like Twitter. Twitter's <laughs> sure, good. Really. Playing a lot of GTA 5, yo. <laughs> Do you like right Sapphire? On. Sapphire? I don't know. Somebody I know plays it, is in love with Sapphire. So. It's oh, a game? I know about the game. Yeah. No. In GTA 5, I, the character. I've got limited time, and I'm spending all that time playing GTA 5. Sapphire is a character for in GTA 5. Look out for her, what? apparently. She's a oh. dancer. Is she a prostitute? Yes, she is. I said dancer. I meant prostitute. Oh, stripper, stripper. Okay. Yeah. Uh, is she All the right, one that has a up? man we got a, voice? We got a game to play. All right, look, I don't uh, know. if you guys want to send in stuff, hit us up at fr at twit.tv. Since, since Tom doesn't want to wrap up, I'll wrap up for us. We're going to start the movie draft. Love you guys. You said I didn't want to wrap up. No, I want to wrap up, and I'm going to wrap up. Twit.tv slash fr. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, you're looking at Brian Brushwood, Justin Robert Young, and <laughs> Jeff Kanata, three of the six competitors that will take you into our winter movie draft. Casey McKinnon, Father Robert Balliser, fill out the slate. We've got some new folks, we've got some old faces, and we've got some new folks in old movies faces to bid on. It is time for the winter movie draft. Those of you who are new let me tell you how it works. Just like in the summer movie draft, we have a slate of movies. You each have $100 or Brian Bucks or McKinnon Marks or father figures to spend <laughs> over the entire draft. Uh, it will be conducted as an auction. At the end, you will have a slate of movies and you will get a point for every domestic gross dollar that movie makes. At the end, the person with the most points wins the movie draft. And as you saw in that introduction, sometimes you need very little money to win. As the time I won, I think it was the smallest number up there, 471 million. Uh, so Brian Brushwood, shall we begin? Yeah, we're going to, uh, we figured out that the auction goes better if somebody else is our enforcer. So we're going to have Patrick be the official auctioneer. Patrick, you keep everything moving at a fair pace. Uh, understand we got a lot of movies to get through. So we probably don't want to yep. dedicate more than 60 seconds or so to each one, but I hereby proclaim that the first movie is now on the block, Gravity. This is from uh, Alfonso. How do you say his last name, Jeff? We're on. Soriano. We're, yeah, then, there you go. <laughs> the guy who uh, created Children of Men, one of my all-time favorite movies. Uh, this thing, 97% positive reviews, a Metacritic score of 97. Uh, I, I, I want it. It's, it looks like it's going to be good, but will it make money? Production budget, budget was $80 million. I'll, I'll go ahead and kick it off with, uh, I'll give it 10. 12, 14, 15, 16, 
20. What? Yes. God. <sighs> Jeff, are you going to let her get away with that? What? Uh, actually, I've heard that Gravity is is uh, early buzz is is not only one of the best movies of the year, but one of the best movies of all time. James Cameron said it was the best space movie ever, and he makes yeah. movies in space. <laughs> good <laughs> movies don't necessarily make good domestic gross. Martin Scorsese I, said, "I wish I had made that movie." I'll go twenty one. I'll go twenty one. Oh, you jerk! When does 22. this close? Twenty two. Uh, wait, wait, Tom said 22. So if you want it, you got to go to 23, Casey. 25. Patrick, what are we calling this? Oh, oh 25. Wow. <laughs> Patrick, you got a role to play here, sir. Yeah. Or not. Well, <laughs> that's a lot. You guys are busy bidding. I'm letting you bid. Bid it up. Once. You're bidding you fast. Come on. You got to close right. it at All some right, point. Uh, I don't know. That's pretty bold. 25. I, I <laughs> like that bit. That's a... Hmm. Just a going right. once. 20, going going twice. once. 25. Tom, twice. are you going to let the new guy get a $25 bid on what is yes. perhaps the best movie of the winter? Apparently, yeah. yes. <laughs> Next movie. Congratulations, Casey. You got you got gravity for $25. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Runner, Runner. Uh, I don't know anything about this movie. This is one. It's got... Uh, uh, it's uh, got Batman. Batman. And, Batman's in uh, it. Yeah. And and Sean uh, Parker or whatever. <laughs> from What's Facebook. it about? Yeah. yeah. It's about Batman. <laughs> you know, with the bats and the boats. Oh, uh, real quick. Uh, people are pointing out, like, it's already made $11 million foreign. Uh, this game only about the domestic. Everything is domestic. Mm -hmm. So wrap your head around domestic is... is yeah, I'm, I'm in for three. I'm in for five. I'll kick it off to five. Uh, six. Six to Father Robert. Going once. Seven. Going twice. Wait, Eight. that's my job. Going once. Seven. Going twice. Seven. To, to Tom? To Tom. Tom's got it. That's it. Tom's got it for seven. Oh, wow, that was fast. Kind of makes me nervous. I think I think you got a good buy on that one. Uh, let's so. see. I... Next up, we got Captain Phillips. This is the Tom Hanks thing about the guy who was awesome for uh, getting his boat hijacked by Somali pirates. <laughs> <laughs> Look, they've taken me and Wilson. In <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it one McWuffy. <laughs> uh, That's McWuffie. disgusting. Oh, wait, what? I I'm will, in for nine. I'm in for ten. Oh, jeez. Killing me. Killing me, Smalls. I'll do 13. thirteen. Oh, wait, who is first? I need a judge's ruling. I heard Justin. Okay. I could blame Skype. How could I not love the pirate movie? <laughs> you got a bird on your shoulder. That's true. I'll go 15. All right, 15 for Jeff. Going once, going twice. Sold. Wow, look at that. Not bad. Uh, all right, next up we got Machete Kills. Uh, I never saw the original Machete, although I did really like Machete. the trailer from Grindhouse. Um, Ultraviolet. Uh, dude, big names in this. Charlie Sheen, Antonio Banderas, no, Jessica no, uh, Alba. Carlos Estevez, Brian. Oh, sorry, yes. Uh, and Mel Gibson. Uh, which I believe is this Mel Gibson's first return to cinema since uh, since after no that no bed? no no get the gringo oh yeah and All also right. which embarrassing anti-Semitic rant there's been many returns <laughs> since the embarrassing anti-Semitic rant for, in many uh, ways for Mel, Gibson. Mel Gibson never left us uh, I, I'll give it five bucks <clears throat> I'll give it seven eight hmm. All right, eight dollars to Casey. Going once, going twice. Sold. Legitty. All right, next up we got the remake for Carrie, um, which looks like a faithful retelling of the original story from the 1970s, based on yeah, the, the Carrie King. Underwood story. This is great. No. Yeah. <laughs> so they're doing the Sunday Night Football theme. <laughs> Uh, this one, uh, I, I mean, what's to say? It's a remake of Carrie. Uh, I'll give it ten bucks. Whoa. Big money. Yeah. Eleven. Uh, Brian loves the horror movies, though, so he's he's he being nonchalant about this. He horror, wants it. Eleven, by the way. Eleven. Twelve. Twelve. Oh. Fifteen. Whoa, Justice has fifteen? It's going to do well. I'll go sixteen. It is going to do well. It's it's a, it's a, it's a uh, October movie. And all those kids that haven't seen Carrie. All right, 15 to Justin. 
Going once, going twice. Wait, no, 16 was me. I said, Justin oh, said 15. Oh, well, then you get a 16, going once, going twice. Sold. All right. I bought Carrie. Damn one, you all. Um, 12 Years a Slave is, uh, uh, talk about a horror movie. It's the horrible story of a guy who gets uh, kidnapped and brought down from where he was free in the north into the south in the 19th century and lives life as a slave for uh, some indeterminate number of years. Um, Stars Seth Rogen and Jonah Hill. <laughs> oh, dude, they got heavy hitters, though. It's uh, Brad Pitt. Oh, it's a buddy comedy. Uh, I'll, kick, I'll kick it with four. Uh, oh, five. Paul Giamatti's in it. I'll six. give it a six. Seven. Eight. Uh, I'll go eight. Oh, nine. Nine. Already got eight. oh nine. <laughs> Ten. Start bidding less than the other person. <laughs> Wabbit season Duck season <laughs> Alright we get 10 to Casey Going once Wow, We should go up to at least 12 don't you guys think Come on. Yes I do going sure. twice. That, that is a $12 movie I'll go 11 I'll go 11 No I think he said another number No I was kidding I'm not <laughs> <laughs> Alright 11 to Brian You know how to play this game already it's Once <laughs> Going twice Sold. Sold. There it is. Uh, all right. Next up is Escape Plan. It's got uh, Sylvester Stallone in it. He's a guy who designs prisons and then gets falsely accused something, something locked up in a, in an escape-proof prison. That he Finally, himself... Schwarzenegger and Stallone in the same movie. <laughs> he's, he's trapped in a prison that he designed that was designed to be escape-proof. Um, yeah, man. Let's do... If this was 1988, you guys would be put betting oh, all your dude, money on dude, yeah. It. I'll go four it, bucks. Is, we're going crazy with this one in 88. It's a party. Four five. bucks. Five? A prison of my own design. Um, five. No, bucks. no, Justin's got five. That's already oh, Jeff. Has does, sorry, didn't hear that. Is it worth six? <sighs> Just five? Come on, guys. Six. I, I, Stallone makes money. Stallone makes money. I mean, you may not like him, but... Who had six? Six. <laughs> six to Tom Going once Going twice for six Sold Wow, alright Wow, Bargain. that's not All bad right. for six <clears throat> uh, Jackass presents Bad Grandpa If you saw the uh, trailer for this Then you saw how an entire movie is marketed On exactly one scene At the end, it was a very funny scene however I will say that It looks like it's a Borat style thing Where they've got a narrative comedy But uh, scenes with people who are uh, unwittingly Roped into it, jackass style. Um, uh, with, Fifteen. Uh, what? what? Whoa. Yeah. Oh, Sixteen. Oh, oh. Seventeen. Bad grandpa now. Seventeen. Um, that that's bold. Okay. No, it's actually not. I mean, it's like yeah. that. once the trailer released, this thing doubled in its expected gross. Uh, I don't know I, that jackass. I mean, jackass was popular, but it didn't break a hundred mil. Uh, dude. I, mm, Wait, Jackass never broke 100 mil? Dude, I'll tell you what, if it's 17 and or 16 or 17, this thing's going to make 60 grand or 60 million. And things with bad known brand right now. It's <laughs> a good point. Wow, I think Justin's got it at 17. All right, 17 that's going once, going twice. Sold. That's a bargain. I'm going to go see that. Jackass 3D. I think that's, a, that's actually a sleeper. Yeah. $4 million. That trailer wow. was hilarious. Uh, next up, we got The Counselor. This is another directed by Ridley Scott, um, written by Cormac McCarthy, Michael Fassbender, Brad Pitt, Penelope Cruz, yeah. Cameron Diaz, John Leguizamo. Uh, yeah, man, it's about a, a lawyer. Leguizamo's in it? Three yes. bucks. <laughs> yeah. he, uh, he play, uh, it's about a dude who can uh, is a, a lawyer who uh, dabbles a little bit in, in drug trade. and, and If this doesn't go deeper. for over five, this is a house of bugging. Five. <laughs> I will say I five right now. This to be a I house said of first. We get Tom five. at five. Six. There you go. Jeff You've had six. your miss, Justin. I'll go. I'll go seven. All right, Brian at seven. Going once. Eight. Eight dollars. Oh. oh. How much money do I have? <laughs> Hundred. 
Uh, oh, I don't. It doesn't. No, update. I'm not bidding a hundred. By the way, I don't. Hundred dollars to Tom. There we go. Oh no, no, he's in. That, that, that counts. <laughs> it's the Sotheby's rules. Uh, how do I tell Our how much money? It's sufficient, sir. It's in the sidebar. It, it's. Uh, oh wait, I'm looking at the wrong thing. There we go. All right. So, uh, yeah. No. Okay. You can have it. Wait. All right. Uh, going once. Going twice. Sold. All right, now here's a big question mark. We got Ender's Game, which uh, <clears throat> of course one of the most hotly anticipated science fiction titles of all time, with a with an all star cast including uh, uh, Ben Kingsley and Harrison Ford. Um, but but then but also kids. Yes, that's a good point. There's also kids, and also the horrifying rhetoric of uh, of Orson Scott Card in public that uh, maybe 30, has right the marketability. Are you going thirty to right out of the gate from Tom? Wow. Bid it up, nerds. <laughs> uh, I think this movie's going to tank. Anyone anyone else going to go on? I'm with you, Jeff. I, I don't think anyone but Ender's Game fans are going to watch it. I'm going to watch it, but I don't think there's enough people like me. It's going to be like I thought Star Trek was going to kick butt and break barriers. Bad, Tom. You should have started that uh, lower. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> it's Tom at 30. He, he, he scared everyone off. Going Tom once. Going twice. Sold. Mm. You could have got that for 15, Tom. Maybe. Now I know. Thanks for the advice. They're going to have to train kids to watch this movie. It's going to stink on <laughs> ice. Look, I mean, it was a $110 million dollar production. It's a movie. It's probably uh, going to make back what, it, what they invested. So it'll make 100 mil. All right. While we're on the subject of turkeys, next up is Free Birds, which is about turkeys that try to escape, and uh, that's okay. just about Hollywood all Stock Exchange is Turkey. Actually, they they go back in time, Brian, to stop the tradition of eating turkeys on Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Oh, so it's like Free Jack. No, they keep this that. keep this in mind. This movie was put out in a new style of animation filmmaking where they want to put out a lot of movies for $35 million or less. So it's really, it's cookie cutter, it's factory type stuff. And I'm starting it off at five. Six. Se seven. Eight. Ten. $10 to Casey, going once, going mm -hmm. twice. I will go and, and wait. Never mind. Sold. I folded. Woohoo. That's actually a really good buy. I suspect that, it, that it, that's going to do really well. And it doesn't oh, matter. Yeah. I didn't say anything, but you should see the voice actors on, uh, on the cast list. Looks good. Really good. Yeah, well, yeah but the, look, look at the voice actors on Turbo. Like, you know, voice acting doesn't matter. Not in these movies. Tur Turbo made money, though. No, it didn't. George it made like God. $40 million. Right. That's Yeah, but this ha looks like it's going to have a good plot, and it has good actors behind it, so. I actually agree. I, I think that there's if this came after some of the movies that are like right, like that we are looking at, which is why people are holding on to their purse strings, clutching them ever so tightly, uh, <laughs> then this would have went for close to 20 if it came after these other movies. All right, so... Uh, like Las Vegas! Las Vegas has a bunch of big names. Michael Douglas, Robert De Niro, Morgan Freeman, Kevin Klein, and Mary Steenburgen. Uh, we were visited while he was shooting this movie by Romney Malco, who that's stars. Right. Yeah, Romney Malco's in there as well. Uh, this uh, one has all the star power, that's for damn sure. Uh, is this so like the Rat Pack four. one? Yes, it is. Oh, this uh, actually looked pretty like good. I'll go, I'll, go, I'll go five. I'll go seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Mm. You like that number, Casey. I like even numbers. Now Racist. we know your weakness. <laughs> <laughs> Ten to I, Casey. I'm going only going to do fractions from now on. 10.0 to Casey going once, going twice, sold. <laughs> yeah, wow. All right. Yeah, so uh, She's gotten some bargains. Yeah, she really is. Uh, next, yeah, he doesn't earn even bidding. Strategy, just stockpiling. Yeah, 
Well, and no, and she's like she's she's spent uh, a lot of money so far, but she's got a, an impressive arsenal already. Thor: The Dark World the sequel. It's Thor two. Uh, we got all this. It's all the Thor people, but they're back with more Thor. Um, I'll give it ten <laughs> bucks. Uh, let's let's go twenty. Twenty five. Twenty six. Twenty eight. Forty. Forty. What the? Yeah. Forty two. The answer to the life, the universe, and everything. 47. The answer to what number is going to win Thor? <laughs> <laughs> That's science. That's I'm science, baby. D. Wow. Was that 50? That was 50. I heard 50. 5 0. 5 0 creeping. All right, 53. Oh. What? 53 to Father Robert. That's amazing. You know hmm. you want it, Jeff. You no, know you want, want wow. that door. Just think about it. It's the big hammer. 53 to the priest going once. Uh, going 55. Twice. Oh. What? 55. <laughs> <sighs> I don't know. Mr. Roberts. I don't know. 55 going once, going twice. 56. Oh! <laughs> wow. 56 Dude, you just got one. holy ghosted, Kanata. <laughs> <laughs> Peace of the Lord be with you. <laughs> I'm gonna bow and also out. with this bid. All right. Is, and also All right. 56 All right. going once, going twice. Bargain. Sold. If it's a bargain, why didn't you bid? Don't have $56. Right. <laughs> there you go. Next up, it is The Wolf of Wall Street. Do you love stories of people who rip off other people? Well, do we have a Martin Scorsese production for you? Leonardo DiCaprio, Matthew McConaughey, Jonah Hill, and all of your money going up in smoke. What do you guys think? For, uh, for the, the record, Street? this movie has already had buzz that it might get moved. So yep. if you are buying uh, this. I love the movie poster. It's not finished yet. The editing's not finished. All right, by the way, uh, do we decide? Are we we good on the waiver wire? The idea of uh, there'll be other movies that that aren't on the list, and and whoever has the most dollars at the end gets the first chance to swap. I wanted to do it, but I think I mean if I don't know whether it's fair to do it with all these new players to to introduce something. Okay, that. Well, is, and, and, well, especially after I've spent and it might that have more than changed half. bidding strategies and all of that too. Yeah, no, that's a good point. We'll we'll do that in the summer league. But um, but the more uh, we were talking about it, and I think you're right. I just wonder if we should gray this out because it might get moved, and we have another movie on that week, the fifteenth. No, I said. I mean, you should buy it. I mean, it, it affects the price of it. Yeah, you should not, buy it. Yeah. Just just know that yeah. if you're going to bid for it. I'll put five. Save as much money as I can and invest it in a mutual fund. <laughs> <laughs> it's so smart. I mean, you're so right. That's what uh, I'm doing I, in Grand Theft Auto, man. I'll bid I'll saving bid all my money. Even knowing that it might get moved, I'll bid five dollars. We've already got five no, from no, the priest. We already got five in there. Oh, six. Fine. Six I bid six too. Then he has Wait. a name. <laughs> hmm. Six. Eh? Eight. Six. Six from the magician. Oh, wait. The way, who said seven? No, Justin said seven. Justin I didn't say said, no. Whoop. Somebody said no, eight. Justin Somebody said 50. Said no, well, because if no one said seven, I'll take a seven. Seven for Ro Father Robert. Said, it looks eight. good. It's just no, if it gets moved, it. it's going to suck. What? I didn't say eight. Casey and Shutter Island made money. I mean, and the rumor is that there's like three options. Either it right. gets moved uh, to later in the year or it gets moved to next year. But they Remember moved this. Moved. Yeah, you get to this pick another. This is exactly what one would the winter last year. Lincoln, that we thought was going to get moved, it ended up being a $100 million movie. That's true. Yeah, this is no Lincoln. And this also, one will also guarantee to your, get you a back $1. door. All right, uh, we get $7 to it's Father Robert. Going once, going twice, sold. I actually think that if that Pardon? releases on that day, that will be the number one value of the entire draft because it's projected it looks around good. seventy million, uh, yeah. and you bought only seven dollars. No, probably That's right. A it's a gamble. It's a good gamble. It's a. That's another one that if it came after the Hunger Games would have right. gone for close right. to fifteen. Yeah, close to double. Uh, I'm not familiar book, with these Hunger Games. What, what are you talking about? Thief. The book thief is uh, which Jeffrey one is Rush. That? Jeffrey Great Rush. Book. Fantastic book. 
Uh, yeah, Jeffrey Rush, Emily Watson. Um, man, that's literally all I know about a book thief. Yeah. Uh, oh, do you have any? Box yeah. office dynamite. <laughs> Jeffrey Rush, and Emily Watson. <laughs> <laughs> it's about, it's about it's a real, death. It's a real hard oh, tale of death. a quiet oh. mention on wait, death. Wait, wait, wait. A movie about death. death. Running time. <laughs> Get ready for Bafo box office. It's a movie. It's a movie told from the perspective of death. Death is the char main character. Oh, that's uh oh, cool. an intangible concept is a main character. Light up the the ticket mm -hmm. printing machines. It's a, it's a really amazing book if you guys haven't read it. Three dollars, four dollars. <laughs> four to ten. <time. laughs> it's a, it's gonna be a good movie. I don't know if it's gonna be a box office. Anything. Four to time going once. Oh, wow. Five dollars. Bastard. <laughs> Five to Jeff. Five to Jeff going once. Going twice. Sold. It's exactly what it's worth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, I so. All right. A little independent project called <laughs> The Hunger Games. Catching this five. one's based on a book, too, right? And. <laughs> <laughs> So it's just like the book thief. Uh, it's got $2. Philip Seymour Hoffman in This uh, one by Dr. Seuss. I'll bid five. I'm uh, going for $40. Oh, I wanted to do 37. Why'd you jump me? Because you had the opportunity. You picked five instead. Damn. $50. 51. Did somebody just say 50? Yeah. Oh, my. 50, yeah, 50, he did. 55. 57. Hunger, Day, Hunger Games did do well. 60. 60. 62. Hang on, let You're bidding more for this than you did for Thor. Uh, yeah, because it's, it's going to make twice as much money Thor. Yeah. All right, 62 uh, to Justin. There's only, there's only two people 60, who can afford to pay that much. 64. 65. 66. 67. All the money. All the money. Get it in there. Let's go. Come I'm, on. Fine. I'll do, uh, what do I have? I have $83. I'll go straight. No, no, no. $73. $73. 74, because I have more money than you. <laughs> 74 big dollars. 74 Justin, dollars. go to 83 and you'll save a buck. <laughs> I think I think wow, 84, yeah. That's uh that's it. Are you bidding that's 84? The game, which by the way, Justin and I both had the exact same strategy. <laughs> <laughs> so you're bidding 84? Whoa, who said 84? Set Brian just said 84. I'm sorry. Uh What's your bid? Uh, I said 73 and then you said 74. Yeah. All right. And I, I probably missed No one both. else can afford to beat you, so we're done. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Man. Uh, Dude, by I, the way, I just just reading right now on Slash Film that uh, Hunger Games has been moved to the spring. <laughs> what a bummer. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be a double feature with the Wolf of Wall Street, apparently. Crying. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> Delivery Man. Uh, it's got Vince Vaughn. It's a Vince Vaughn movie. I'll give it Delivery six. Delivery Man. I'll give it four bucks. Five I'll bucks. give it five. Six. Seven. Seven. Oh, eight. Nine. Nine dollars. Ten. To... For a Vince Vaughn vehicle, I'll give it ten. Sure. It looked pretty funny. All right, ten to Tom. Going once. Going twice. Sold. I think those are called Vince Vonicles now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had a pair of those installed. So. <laughs> All right, next up we've got uh, another kids movie, Frozen, which uh, is the it's the Disney uh, Winter Wonderland one, where it's like I definitely saw that uh, annoying snowman do his shtick on the screen. Ten bucks. You said ten, J Justin? No, I didn't. Uh, I didn't say Just no. ten. Oh, okay. Justin is cash uh, poor at this moment. If, if you're not aware, I'll uh, do twelve. I'll do, I'll do thirteen. I'll do 15. 15. I'll do 16. I'll do 17. Hmm. That's not for them, all right. Hmm. 17 to Father Robert going once. 18. 20. $20 going once. Going twice. 21. Oh, oh so close. Oh, minute. Minute. Oh. Drama. All right, 21 for Tom going once. Going twice. 23. What? 23 going once. Going twice. Sold. It's the only animated film the entire 
season, the entire holiday season. Well, except uh, for aside from the uh, the turkey escape. Yeah. Uh, all right, man. Wow, old boy. This is the remake of the uh, the is it a Japanese film, Jeff? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, have you heard any of the buzz on this? It's directed by yeah, Spike Lee. Spike Spike Lee. It's supposed to be uh, crazy violent. All right, and it's got Samuel L. Jackson. Um, I will go for five, five. six, seven. Se How high ten. can you? Ten for Casey. She likes ten. <clears throat> Not very many movies left, y'all. And going once. Eleven. Eleven for Tom going once. Thirteen. Thirteen going once. Going twice. Sold. All right, man. So uh, next up, we've got Out of the Furnace. This one's got uh, the old Batman, the ex-Batman, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which one? Uh, this guy. Christian this Bale, Batman. Casey Affleck. Uh, oh, Zoe's so not Val Kilmer. Good. Adam West. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Willem yeah. Dafoe. Michael Keaton. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. It's actually Adam West, yeah. Uh, Out of the Furnace was produced by Leonardo DiCaprio. I didn't know that. Hmm. Uh, okay. $3. So, yeah, I'll give it four. Five. Six. Seven. Are we just counting or bidding? <laughs> <laughs> Dustin doesn't really have much to, to lose now. He's just about all sped. Seven going once. Eight. You, you do have nine, Justin. I was waiting for dramatic effects. <laughs> <laughs> Nine. <laughs> Nine going once, going twice. Sold. Hmm. To Justin for Out nine. Out of the first fever. <laughs> Catch it. Catch it. <laughs> Heating uh, up. Next up, uh, we have another little independent flick called uh, The Hobbit Desolation the of Bay. Smog. Uh, it's a French starting Canadian. Starting at 14. Theater. Just so you know, we're starting at 14. Uh, four, okay, 14. I'll go 20. 25. 30. 35. 40. Tom, you got the last one. You got to get this one to make your collection complete. 42. 43. Oh, 45. 45 going once. Going twice. 46. 46. Oh. Yeah. I heard Brian first. There he is. Brian's good for 46. Oh, wow. 47. 47 going once, going twice. 48. 50. 50 going once, going twice. 51. 55. What? 55 going once, going twice. Sold. Whoa. At this rate, Brian's going to own every movie that re releases on Christmas Day. <laughs> I'm hoping. <laughs> it's a Christmas child. Good time for me. Christmas miracle. Uh, okay, next up, we've got Tyler Perry's A Medea Christmas, uh, which I assume. Damn, features. Jeff, that's, you got a really good looking slate. Yeah. Why, thank you. Damn, girl. I'm actually impressed with him. Damn. Wait, how do we let that happen? Oh, no. Uh, dude, you're working uh, out. Your slate looks good. Tyler <laughs> Perry. I took Thor away. Tyler Perry's Media Christmas. I'll give it. I'll give it three bucks. Zero. <laughs> three. Five. No more cheap movies. Six. Keep this away from Jeff, for God's sakes. That's what I'm doing. Perry movies make money, guys. Yeah, Seriously. they do. And talk about counter programming to The Hobbit. <sighs> what are you saying about The Hobbit's key demographic? <laughs> Are you saying that maybe it's not the same as Medea's demographics? Yes. Okay, we got seven going once. Oh, God. Eight. eight. No. Does Medea voice oh, the wait. dragon in uh, the new Hobbit movie? Yeah. Who's got eight? I, I heard Jeff at eight first. The character of Medea voices the character <laughs> of the dragon. <laughs> we got Jeff so, at eight. I okay, know you're someone not. take this away from Jeff, please. Anybody well, for shut nine. up and let me talk. I'll go nine. Nine yeah. to Tom. <laughs> going once. Going twice to Tom for nine. Sold. Cute. There we go. 
Wow. That's a that's a huge deal. I don't know how you guys let them get this or not. Uh, I don't know. They make money because they're cheaply produced. I, I don't think it's going to do much better than 40, but but still, nine's a good discount on that. Uh, all right. Saving, yeah, I agree with you. That's the thing. Uh, saving Mr. Banks is the story a of Walt Disney. sequel to the Adam Sandler Mr. Banks movie. <laughs> <laughs> This is uh, Tom Hanks, Colin Farrell, uh, and Emma Thompson, Paul Giamatti. It's the story of securing the rights to Mary Poppins for Walt Disney. It looks absolutely delightful, this movie. Yeah? This one, I think uh, this, this one's got a, it's a sleeper. Yeah. You know what it looks like? It looks like that thing sleeper, you do. People are going to be falling asleep in the theater. <laughs> 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 if I were Brian, I'd been 73 right out of the gate. I'll, I'll, go, I'll go $7. Eight. It's Mary Poppins. It's Mary Poppins. Eight dollars oh. to Casey. Going Nine. once. Nine. Oh. Ten. Casey, we're ten what again. Are you waiting for? Mm. Going once. Going Four. twice. Uh, Eleven. Whoa! I couldn't tell who said that first. Yeah, you guys are gonna have to fight it out. Twelve. <laughs> there you go. Twelve dollars. <laughs> going once. Going twice. Fourteen. Whoa. What? Even number 14. Somebody's Three not safe for Mr. McKin Banks. <laughs> Got $14 to throw away. Going once, going twice, sold for $14. All right. American Hustle. Wasn't it originally going to be released under a different name? Uh, it's got Christian no, Dale. It's going to be Russian American Hustle. Hustle was always American Hustle, but uh, it is the new David O. Russell Film with a lot of recognizable stars and a lot of. It was a Russell Hustle, original. <laughs> I'll do eight dollars. <laughs> the Pete Rose story. <laughs> eight dollars to Brian. I'll do nine. Ten nine for American Hustle. We get ten dollars. Well, I'll do eleven then. <laughs> All right. Uh, you know what? I will do. I'll do twelve. I'll do twelve. Bastards. 12 to Brian. Going once. I'll do 13. Wow. Do the hustle. <laughs> <laughs> you you going to make me say it, Brian, or are you just going to outbid? Oh, yeah, you, you could have it. I'm out. A bit on the hustle. It's got Louis C.K. And he Wait, what? Oh, 12, then. Uh, All right. Next up, we've got the Monuments Men, George Clooney, uh, Kate Blanchett, Bill Murray, John Goodman. Those names do anything for you? Uh, Zero dollars. I'm going to give it a, yeah. It's a World War II movie. I'll jump in at uh, $9. $10. Ten. I'll do 11 12. 14 13 Wait, oh, 14. 15. 14. I'll, I'll go 15 <laughs> I think we get Brian at 15 16 What? All right, we get Tom at 16. Going once. Going twice. Sold. All right, man. Uh, then let's do... Um, let's I think do there's Anchor something wrong with the uh, spreadsheet. According to the spreadsheet, Brian has only spent $27. That's, it's, it's kooky, man. There's it's something kooky. wrong with Brian. Uh, you Mr. Know what? Spend man, it all early. <laughs> Anchor Man, the legend continues. Uh, I'm just going to go straight You're going to pay for $21 for it. Yeah, correct, because that's that's all the money left. So I'll pay $21. I'll buy it outright. Um, I'll also... That's a steal. No, um, I yeah. disagree. I think that movie's going to make very little money. You and are I, high I be on, as a kind I want to be rec on record as saying that, because right. everyone... Th this, is, this is snakes on a plane of right now. People uh, think this movie's going to make money, and it ain't. I will also pay $21 for Walking with Dinosaurs. Mm. Oops. And to walk with uh, reptiles. December twentieth. It's Brushwood Weekend. <laughs> <laughs> He's be, uh, putting his family in in a in a revolving door in, in the Alamo Draft House. Well, it's the the eighteenth of October is also Brian Weekend. I will later. also I will also pay twenty one dollars for Jack Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you it's are like a dick. Wait a fortune. minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, no, there's Hold really on. something Hold wrong on. with the spreadsheet. <laughs> you did you did you make this spreadsheet, Brian? No, yeah, no, you I'm purposely telling you. put those at the end. No, I did no, not. I did not. Jam. Oh no, that's right. Yeah, no, because he got outbid on so many of them. Well, now he can't do that for the Secret Life of Walter Mitty. So yeah, I but wanna... I will open it at ten dollars. 
14. Uh, 12. No, 14 is higher than 12. 15. Okay, we're, we're on the secret life of Walter Mitty? <laughs> yes. All right, 20. That's how you do it. And I'm That's done. Two. I'd like to point that out. All right, going and once. Last movie. So, uh, oh, I, I assume we'll go to Jeff, who has the seventeen dollars to spend for it, right? The secret There's life. Well, literally, no reason for me not to do that, right? Forty-seven Ronin, yeah, yeah. Then I that is, do of that. course, I the forty-six Keanu, sequel to the movie Ronin. Keanu, <laughs> deliver me from evil. Uh, yeah, man. Wow. Well, there's that. Oh, people are pointing out that Jack Ryan might get moved if Wolf of Wall Street gets moved. So that's a good, that's a good point as well. But that's it, man. We got, we got our slate and, um. Wow. I'd like to point out that I am, ex I spent exactly the same amount of money as I did the last time. I just keep getting stuck on 86 bucks. Yeah. yeah. It's 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 an emotional significance you have with it. Uh, I, man, that I, number I, right here. I will bring it to a vote. Two of the six of us, now that we all have a slate to look at. Yeah. We vote somebody out? Is that what we're doing? No, 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 no. <laughs> we can do a waiver wire slot, meaning that from no. people who have the least money uh, or have most money left to the person who have the least money, that would be the waiver wire order. And you would be able to select a movie uh, that we did not draft. And that would be added yeah, to you your... To, to add or to replace? Add. You still get to replace the way that we you always did it if one of your movies dies. Wait, what? In the past, uh, we've had movies get moved after the draft, like we've been talking about, and there and and then that person gets to choose another movie. Well, well, the commissioner picks uh, picks I'm one. I'm sorry. Yes, the commissioner that chooses another movie, not the person. You're yeah. right. Um, but but the waiver wire would be just you just get to go grab one from the grab bag for grins because I'll vote for that since I have a lot of money. Well, I was just gonna say I wouldn't have bought forty seven Ronin had yeah. I known that. <laughs> I, well, you would have paid differently for the twenty ones too, Brian. You I, might have I, saved. Yeah. Yeah. You know, no, you wouldn't have had to bid twenty one every time. But, but I also, like the idea since as, I have a lot I'm, of money. I like. Let me be on record. I like the idea. I feel like all of us might have conducted our drafts differently had that been in our heads at the beginning. Yes. For some reason, I, I understood. I, I, did, I figured I would just bring it up for a vote to see whether. Sure, sure. Now, now I, maybe I misunderstood the way the waiver wire worked because I was under the impression that you could only substitute a movie. You could drop one of your movies and replace it with one from the grab bag, and you had, but you had to go in, in order, uh, priority given to whoever had the most money. Uh, I, I'm fine with that if we want to do that. I mean, so you, I, I still agree we would have played the game different. We'll, we'll save it for the summer, I think. Okay. Well, I mean, I would Let's say do I, it. I'm I, in favor of doing it. I just don't want to do it retrospectively now. Yeah, yeah. I would say save it for the summer. Or okay. retroactively. All right. So real quick, what, uh, if we're voting, uh, somebody throw together a, uh, a vote in the chat, and we're about to have to clear out for uh, this oh, no, weekend. No, no, no. I mean, like, yeah, is the, the chat room won't want to. No, 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 no. I, 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 no, no, no. I, I, in the chat room, I want them to vote on who they think is going to win because oh, they, okay. they have that yeah. great predictive energy. Because uh, right now, I think that Jeff has a phenomenal. Uh, showing a, a great slate. Uh, I think that uh, that Justin, I think your strategy, Hunger Games is going to do 400 million. Yeah, Bad Grandpa think, has every possibility of doing 60, 80 million. I think you're going to clear this thing with a half billion dollars. Yeah, I think Hunger Games it was was the clear big fish, and uh, it, it could it could easily make more than. You know the next movie down. It ended. It ended at four fifty. I think the first one. I mean, yeah. factor in inflation and just uh, uh, the jump that sequels take. Sure. And the fact that the first one was good. Uh, I mean, you you got an outside shot at this making six. I'm definitely worried about the Hobbit having a. You know, the, the first Hobbit didn't do what anyone expected it to do. No. Um, I, I so. was I was playing betting it would be around two hundred and fifty million, and then once yeah. I got that, I. I was just sort of like amazed. It might not, though. But it might be the low 200s. high on Captain Phillips. I think, it, I think Captain Phillips is going to do well, but I, I also think Gravity is going to do really well. Um, so I, I was really, th I thought I could steal Gravity uh, early in the draft, but uh, Casey really played that well. To be honest, I think. I, I'm really happy with my slate, man. I think I, I have a solid I'm number I'm just going to shake my head and consider my bad choices. 
No, no, Father Robert, I think, I think yours is the Dark Horse uh, p possible winner because you have Thor and uh, uh, Frozen, which are $200 million a piece, easy, possibly two fifty a piece. So that gets you into the half Frozen's million not, territory. That's not guaranteed on okay, but No, 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 but, but, uh, but Wolf of Wall Street, if it comes out, that's, that's 70 my wild card. Guaranteed, right? Like, yeah. then that's well, then. What I'm going for Thor is there's there is a Marvel effect. I mean, you've got so you had Avengers, you had Iron Man three. It's the same universe, it's the same characters. I'm hoping that kind of drags it up a little bit from the original yeah. straw. Strawpoll.me four slash four nine one zero zero one. Jackie Hearn put together a straw poll if you want to uh, vote. By the way, we should point out that right now, if you go Ooh. to draft nsfwshow dot com slash form you can play along the way the chat realm plays along with us is we have now made we have now set the prices for all of these you guys can figure out where we were idiots and went too high where we were uh, idiots and went too low go out pick out the bargain spend your own hundred dollars and uh you get to play along in the chat realm league which of course we make sure to follow along with on frame rate speaking of which you'll get regular updates uh on frame rate and nsfw show uh tom anything else before we wrap things up no, that's it. Uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. And uh, watch NSFW Show and Frame Rate if you don't. But I can't imagine you're here live and you don't. But maybe you've like, stumbled across this. So go to twit.tv. Check it out. It's awesome. Let me also say uh, we love it when, when everybody plays their own leagues and does their own drafts and everything. So if you are doing one of those and you have, like, your own rules and, and, and uh, mm -hmm. we love hearing about it. So hit us up at Schwood or at Justin R. Young on Twitter, because it, it always delights me when people are are, are doing their own stuff with, with their own circle of friends. Uh, on a technical note, uh, Patrick, uh, Ashley is the guest on This Week in YouTube, which is coming on right after this, and she's just going to sit here at this computer. So I guess you need to call here, right? Because I'm on with... Yeah, right. yeah, you're, you're on with me. By the way, I just okay. want to point out real quick, the votes are in. Brian has zero votes. <laughs> <laughs> It won't be such a magical Christmas for, for me. <laughs> uh, dude, thank you so much for joining us, Jeff. Very last minute. It was, I'm so thrilled that you made it. I'm I, glad you're playing this time. So much fun. Thank you. It was a blast. Awesome. All right. We'll see you guys. I'm going to hang up now. Bye. 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 Dying of fire.